think I'm on. You one. should be on one. And we'll put you on two. Motorway. Oh, I love this song. Tom Robinson Band. My ear of this. Yeah. Anyway, there's nobody listening. I've got three on mine. You've got three. I haven't looked. I haven't looked. Whoever you are, wherever you are, thank you so much for joining. Myself, Brian Porter, and my lovely, lovely friend, Jack Ekman, alongside me. Jack, we've done... Just tell them how we've dressed today. Well, well, I think, firstly, they'd be grateful that we have dressed. Well, certainly. I think you were pushing for a birthday suit, weren't you? But I was pushing for it. We've settled for the latter. Um, we've, both be, we've both done open water swimming, so... We have. Uh, is that your man? That's your my friend? Go and say hello to him. Out. J j run down there. Literally, run down there. I think that counts. Explain that. Well, Explain that to the listeners. Listeners, I've, I've just given a, a friend of mine a shout. Dan Moss, who plays for Woking, went to uh, Car Hill School with me. He's a year below me, giving us a, a wave back. So he would have expected a few locals coming to see, witnessing him play some football this afternoon. So I've heard of good things about him, but hopefully nothing too good this afternoon, Brian. We've got well, a tough game ahead. Well, we have got a tough game ahead, but, but we were talking to Beachy earlier on, weren't we? And it's a strange one because there's nothing on it for us today. And I cannot remember it in over 50 years of watching football. Mm. I genuinely cannot remember the last time I came to the, a final game of a season where there's nothing on it for the team I'm watching. There's a lot on it for Woking. There is. For us, there's nothing on the game at all. It's, it's cigar time. It's beach ball time. Uh, and the beach balls are going to make an appearance. Look, what great initials that man's got. He's got the initials BP. Hmm. Runs well. Ball. Anyway. <laughs> uh, SPP says, good morning, and if the coasters win, I could streak. Oh, wow. Well, I'll start off with a good morning to you. SPP. The streaking, I'm not sure about. SPP, if the coasters win, I'll streak at Mill Farm when we get back. You heard it here first, folks. Andy Debs. Oh, for God's sake. What is it, Brian? Andy Debs have had more away days than filed this season. They've been Lanza Totti. Yeah, still. They were there. Well, I don't know whether it's still or again. Well, they were there when I was commentating the Ethan other Mitch evening. Oh, I thought Ethan Mitchell had got number 10 on his short. Traditional 30 for him. Yeah. I hope his lordship is going to turn up tonight, who's not playing today and not in the squad. Nicholas George? I hope he's going to be there. No, he's got child duties to perform. Has uh, he not? No, not yet. Oh, has he not popped no, yet? No, not that I'm aware of. I thought that We'd the, have uh, known. We'd have even, even with our head of media, we'd have known. It would have gone on Twitter, wouldn't it? Well, not necessarily. Like you said, with our head of media, maybe <laughs> not. He's not here, so we can slag him off all we want. <laughs> oh, he's listening to us! Three, two, one. What's three? 31. Oh, the number's 31. Oh, 31. Jack Morris. 31. Oh, no, that's uh, team news coming in. Bottom my yes. pen. Thank you, sir. Um... SPB says, I'm happy this is going to be a no-stress game. I wouldn't say that. Where's the stadium announcer gone? He's at the back. I oh, know he's there. Did you want to know the number of Morris? Jack Morris is 31. There you go. It, that's his number, not his age. You'll see, he's, he's only about yay big. Yeah. There you Will go. the walking fans around us please stop looking so worried? It's going to be fine. It's going to be a lovely afternoon. You're going to stay up and boring wood are going to go down. Okay? Yeah? And we'll all save 50 quid a season next season to commentate. Happy days. Lovely people around here. Yeah, working uh, one Andy place Jones, above. Andy Jones, Mike listening. Yes, hello, Grandad. Hello, Grandad. Well, I'm <laughs> Grandad, check your WhatsApp. I've just met Martin Tyler. He's met, well, he's met Martin Tyler. He's banging on about it. This morning, and rightly so, to be honest. I walked into the ground. I see former Premier League commentator Martin Tyler. I thought go like I had to go... Go and get your new best mate, then. I've shaken his hand. Go and get your new best mate and interview him. Should we ask him if he's going to come on to Coaster's Live? Yeah, absolutely. Goodness me. That would be uh, truly something, wouldn't it? Go but on, yes. then. Oh, I can't. I'm Crack scared. On. He's having a conversation. I've shaken his hand already, listeners. The great Martin Tyler oh, that is. I've grown up listening to him. If anybody wants to know what um, what our head of media looks like today, think Tintin. Yeah. He thinks his hair, his hair looks nice, to be fair. So. I tell you what, Jack Tomlinson, our new secretary, he's had a smart haircut, hasn't he, eh? Yeah, he looks, he looks, he looks all right. dapper, doesn't he? Cowley, meanwhile, has not. Yeah, come. But Cowley, Cowley set a he set a record this morning. Okay. As the only kit man from any football team in the UK hmm. to do the park runs at every club that he has visited this season. That's super. Yeah. Yeah. He's on about eight hundred and seventy two park runs now. 
I spoke to a man on yesterday. Yesterday, spoke to a stupid man. He a called stupid man. A stupid man. Yes. Right. And the problem with stupid people is they'll often drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Oh, I did hear you say that. Yes. On yes. On Facebook, um, I think. He claimed that Chandler, he oh, meant yes. Dave Challoner, yes, so yes. he didn't even know the, na- the guy's name, had had nine promotions since he left AFC Filed. I thought to be promoted you'd have at least one a year. Yeah, obviously. Apparently he's on two a year average since he left. Anyway, Manning Tree says, morning boys. Good and morning. I, uh, Aidy Jones says, hi boys, let's get the win. Good morning to you, let's uh, hopefully do so. You know, we've caught a lot of people out, including including my nephew Niall who left Penrith this morning at 7 o'clock to get to Woking for a 12 o'clock kickoff, 12.15 kickoff. I'm looking over the far side. Oh, you could see him from a mile away, we'd wouldn't you? We'd see him with that hair, we'd see him from miles away, wouldn't yeah. we? He's not here at the moment. You'd see his hair from space. I'll tell you who is here. Gail's here. Danny's grandma. Oh, yes. Well, she hasn't given him his present yet. What is the present? Well, it depends what, whether he scores this afternoon. Well, it's got to be sending Woking down to the uh, National League South. No, we don't want to do that. We want to send Boring Wood down. Really? Yes. Yes, because remember, they charge us 50 quid for commentating. I do remember that. Yeah, they charge us. Say 50 quid there. We want some excitement today, though, surely. Uh, don't call me Shirley. Tell you what you're going to have to do, please, Rob Paddock. Can you find me a bottle of water, please? Yeah, we'll need a bottle of water. No, 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 because I know how you'll fill it. I've got some if you want to share. I've got some, thank you, mate. I haven't, I haven't. And you and Jack hasn't got enough, so yes. I have. Two bottles, please, Jack. There's no need for that. Jack, That's Rob, Rob. Rob even. It's all right, carry on, Tintin. There's no it's need fine. for that. Team news. Let's do the team news. Yeah, we can do that. We'll do the team. Do you know what? Funny, you, you read out the home team. Not the home team, the away team. Side. You've given me the opportunity to read out the Coast 11. Yeah, Live on, on air. Go on, do it. Do it, do it. Do it. I've got it all yours. The floor's yours. Because guess, let's face it, guys, this guy's going to go on five live one day, so he might as well get used to reading teams out. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not being ridiculous, and you know I'm not. The coaster side that travel here today to take on a Woking team that are hoping to stay above water this morning, this afternoon, whichever one will go. It's 5 to 12, folks. The coasters start with Chris Neal in goal for the first time in a very long time, ladies and gentlemen. So no Theo Richardson today. He's on the bench for the Coasters. Number two, right back, Bryce Hassad. And number six is Adam Long, who keeps his place in this AFC filed side. 15 is Sam Graham. 17 is Connor Barrett. 19 is Johnny Ustabashi. 21 is Max Conway. 23 is Danny Whitehead. 24 is Dan Adshead. 29 is Danny Ormrod, who celebrated his 18th birthday yesterday. Maybe he'll celebrate with a goal this afternoon. And number 30 is Ethan Mitchell on loan from Wigan Athletic. The substitutes for the coast is number 25, Theo Richardson. Free, Luke Conley. Oh, yes! 18 is Owen Jarrett Evans. 20 is Tom Walker. And a first appearance on the bench for the coasters for number 31, Jack Morris, Brian. I'm going to use your pe- my pen that I lent you to write Jack's number on there. Um, so yes, they've absolutely uh, every credit to our new club secretary Jack Tomlinson for absolutely stitching Owen Jarrett Evans up there. <laughs> Are we going to call him Jarrett Evans? I all think afternoon? we're going to we're gonna have to call him. We'll, we'll call him Har- Jarrett Hyphen Evans, just for the giggles and the other stuff. Oh yeah. The oh, God, I should have had a look at the walking team sheet first, shouldn't I? Before I started reading their names out. Good luck. Uh, in goal for the Cardinals is number 22, Will Yaskalina. Two is Dan Moss, who actually attended Carhill School in Kirkham and went to school with our very own Jack yeah, Eckman. good friend of mine. Uh, better looking than Jack, but there you go. Number three, the captain is Josh Casey. Four, Scott Cuthbert. Fourteen is Rhys Brown. Sixteen, Tunji Akinola. Twenty-one, Timmy Odishina, who was a fan's favourite at AFC Five. And in fact... It was only when we got to the FA Trophy final when I was speaking to his mum that I discovered that it was Timmy Odishina, like it's got an H in it, instead of Odessina that I've been calling him all season. I apologised profusely and said I wish he'd told me. So anyway, at least I can call Timmy Odishina by his correct name. Yes. We'll see if the stadium announcer does it that way. We'll anyway, see. I digress. Number 23 is Jermaine Anderson, 31, Jaden Luca. 32, Curtis Edwards, and 38, Kevin Burko. On the substitutes bench, number 7, Ricky Caboa. 10, Lewis Walker. 
18, Mani Okalea Olikea. No, I'll try that. Olaleki. Oyaleki. Oyaleki. Got it in the event. I'm not going to have a go. Oyaleki. Uh, 27, Dion Kelly Evans. And 33 is Charlie Kendall. The referee this afternoon is not listed on our team sheet. Hmm. I wonder if our friends behind us have got the names of the referees. And no, unfortunate that. No. No. The music is is low key. So I think there's a few a nerves. Big game here. Around the ground, isn't a there? Big game for walking. We spoke to Chris Beach earlier, didn't we, Jack? And, and we did. he You know what? The more I speak to Chris Beach, the more I really engage and like the man. He's just he just talks so much sense and he absolutely, you know, we Let's face it, folks. We need Chris Beach to be our manager next season. And uh, I believe him. we've got to have him, haven't we? we haven't got him. The first major signing for next season has to be Chris Beach. Yeah, I couldn't have said it any better myself, to be honest. There's no doubt in my mind that the coasters require his services next season. I mean, I think if the season started in January, Brian, when Chris Beach took over, the coasters would be fourth in the table, which was something that most supporters of the club couldn't even fathom, really. Is it? It doesn't come into words really how, how much that this coaster side need Chris Beach and hopefully that's one of the first piece of business that we uh, we jot down and, and move on towards the next season to be honest. And uh, what a lovely sight to see Luke Conlon back on the pitch. So you've done your bit. I'm going to go and say hello to my good friend Luke Conlon. You are going to hold the fort and there's a few bits of chat in there. So I'm going to mute mine. I'm going to go and say hello to Conlon. You're off pitch yes. side are you? Wish him luck for me anyway, because it might be his final appearance in AFC Filed Colours, whether he makes an appearance today. Thank you very much, Rob. Rob's gifted us a, a nice bottle of water there, folks. Shall I run through some comments for you where Brian goes pitch side? The message from Rachel Shannon says, good morning. Good morning, Rachel. Thank you very much for joining us as we've... Just hit the afternoon, 12 o'clock, bang on, 15 minutes till kickoff, folks, as the players down in front of us continually get warmed up for this massive, massive fixture for Woking as they look to secure survival for the National League for another season. Woking here in Surrey currently sitting 20th place, ladies and gentlemen. That is one place above the final four relegation spots. Woking are the only team above them. And that can reach Woking this afternoon. They sit one point behind them on 51 points. Woking, the host today, on 52. The main talking point coming into this one, though, is that fixture between Boreham Wood in 21st and Ebbsfleet in 19th, which puts Woking in, pretty, in a pretty uncomfortable position, hosting the AFC filed side here today. Ebbsfleet United currently sit two points above Boreham Wood, obviously one point behind our uh, Woking in that one. Remember that today's home side are Boreham Wood. They're looking to get a home victory or at least a point to put Woking into the danger end in about an hour and a half's time. Epsley will obviously hope to change their outcome by about 1.30 or so. The coasters are safe. The main talking point you've been made, waiting for is the fact that these AFC file players will be playing National League football next season. 51 points sit Boreham Wood and 55 sit the Coasters in 16th place. Four points separating them that obviously cannot be reached in one match. SBB says, Jack and Brian, I've listened to one of the matches on Tuesday and I'll tell you that why I may have been, why I may have covered the match, the love and joy he has for Coasters Live was 100% absent. So happy to be here, and we're all thankful for your continued support bringing to us. So, SBB, superb comment there. Thank you so much, and this is why we do it for the support of you guys. It's very much appreciated, and when the Coasters can back up the points we try to make on Coasters Live as well, it always looks a million times better. Big game this afternoon for the Coasters, and to be honest. Ladies and gents, I'll be pushing to this one to try and send Woking down into the National League South. So it's going to be an exciting one from a Coasters point of view as well. Woking will not go down without a fight. Chris 5, 2553 says, hello, everyone. Hello, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Calf J says, afternoon, afternoon, Calf. Max Bailey's with us again for the final time in 23-24. 
Not to panic, everyone. He has arrived. Panic over, ladies and gents. FBB says it's a grey and murky morning for him today. Only 7 a.m. Big yawn to everyone. Yes, we had an early start ourselves, meeting at Mill Farm for 6 o'clock in the morning. We had a fairly reasonable journey down to Surrey this morning, but I think we're more than happy just, just to arrive by now. It's going to be a long day for us here at AFC Filed, the staff anyway. We've got a journey back later. It should take about four and a half hours to get back up to the northwest, and then the evening is going to be spent giving these AFC Filed players their awards for the season. They've been superb over the campaign, and it's time for them to get their awards for their hard work and their desire to keep the coasters in the National League this season. Caf J says the music's improving, to be honest. I can't hear it at the moment. I haven't truly been listening, but... I'll take your word for that. SBB says, insane in the memory. So we're just talking about music in the chat so far. Bristol Coastal says, afternoon all. Jeannie Hall says, Brian doesn't need any encouragement. Well, he's down pitch side. I think he's forgotten his commentary duties so far today as the Coasters head back in to the dressing rooms as they look to prepare for the final home league game of the season. Rob, just while I've got you, while Brian's down pitch side, are you excited for this game? I'd say you're probably that one. Big, oh, big game for Woking yeah. today. Do you think that they will push this side, filed side to the limit? Do you think they'll stay up if, if they can? Uh, I think Woking will push. Yeah. But I will be pushed off the microphone now because Brian Porter is back. So that's my input to Coasters Live. Over to Mr. Brian Porter. Well, Brian. No, oh, not yet. You, you crack up. Oh, I you can, can crack continue. Um, yeah, I do think Woking will push filed. I think what our story was in the week was very much survival. It was the big aspect of the season. It was looking very unlikely at parts of this campaign. So to come into the final day, Jack, as we were speaking to Beachy earlier, to come into today, to be relaxed, to be chilled, to be able to enjoy this afternoon's football and to be having a laugh as well, just be able to come to the game with a smile on our face and just enjoy the final day. It's really refreshing. It's what we need. And I think Woking, they've got much more to play for than us, obviously, uh, but they'll push us. But one thing that Far won't do is we won't sit and roll over this afternoon. We'll be willing to put up a fight, end the season on a high, and how good would it be, Jack, after Southend thoroughly outclassed us last week to finish the season on a high this afternoon and uh, cause some, some problems for the home support and send ourselves into the off-season. Three months of painless... Uh, action uh, as you could say but we all miss the football and we certainly will over that time but how nice would it be to go into those three months to prepare for next year a real push into the top half of the campaign as is the aim from David and the rest of the team here at the Coasters and really go into it on a high that's our aim for this afternoon Jack and uh, Beaches 11 that he's put out certainly shows no signs of coming into this game and showing the home side any mercy yes yeah, certainly yes yeah. Rob mentioned there I actually couldn't have said it any better myself we come into this game it's Atmospheres are rising inside the ground here today as Woking look to secure their safety. The MKJ Group Stand Limited is filling up behind the goal. They've got a good average attendance to this Woking side. Going back to what Rob said, we all know that Chris Beach's AFC files are not a side that tend to do very well when they sit back and look to take on pressure from the other side. So in my opinion, the Coasters will go for this as hard as they can. They'll try and put Woking on the back foot because I feel like that's the only way that they know how to play. But we all know that Woking will be up to this one. They'll know the importance of this upcoming 90 minutes. I think that there might be a possibility that the Coasters don't put their foot on the gas as much as maybe the supporters want them to or expect of them. But this Woking side will truly know the importance of this game because this could potentially be the final 90 minutes of football that they face up in the National League for the upcoming couple of years. Huge game, huge importance for Woking and there couldn't be any more on the line for today's host, Brian. Who's back with us, by the way? I'm back with you. I've got Hi, no Brian. idea what he was on about then because I wasn't listening. I've just said thank you to all the players. I saw you down there, to be honest. And, and Nick Anderson just said thank you for what? Thank you for what? Discuss. Reasons for us to thank the players. I like the mindset. The he really wants more, uh, he more wants from more. the next season. Um, we're just listening to a, an announcement about a Here he comes. Should we try and get him on? David's work has also been regularly used in the local and national press. In addition to this presentation of a signed 21 shirt, 
So they're doing a presentation to a volunteer who's been here 21 years um, with a, a signed shirt with uh, the number 21 on the back of it. We're blessed with the presence of uh, the legendary broadcaster that is uh, Mr. Martin Tyler, who's, uh, who's got his T-shirt. Now he thinks he thinks he's here for a quiet afternoon, but we're, gonna, we're getting him on at half time. That would be great. We're just having a photograph taken for Steve McLaren. We are suited and booted. Well done to David, a volunteer here at Walking for 21 years. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Brian doesn't need any encouragement for what? what? What's gone on in the chat while I've been away? Because I can't scroll back through it for some reason. You lot have been naughty while I've been away. We're well more behaved than you are. Oh, there we go, there we go, right. Right, SBB says, Jack and Brian, I listened to one of the matches on Tuesday. I'll tell you while it may have covered the match, the love and joy that Coaster's Life brings was 100% absent. So happy to be here, and we're all thankful for your continued support. But SBB, is this going to be a, is this going to be an obituary this afternoon? It's going to be a look. This is going to be a, a broadcasting obituary. Look at that lovely comment from, Great, from Rob it? over in, in in Massachusetts. That's absolutely beautiful. You guys have made some wonderful, beautiful comments. And you know what? The bottom line is, we just do this because we love the club, don't we? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the fact that we. We're having a rave. We're having a rave. It's absolutely brilliant. This is great. Do you know the name of that uh, mascot, Rob? How do you know it? Because he knows random stuff. Come on, coasters. Okay, you should be back now. Are we back? Check. Are we back? Both teams are out. Ah. Uh, Oh, they're coming out to a town called Malice by the Jam. Every credit. Are we back? Which sounds like we are. I'm getting text messages now. And back, says Kath. Good stuff. Thank you, Kath. Yes, we're back, says Jeannie Hall. The coasters this afternoon are all in their, their blue and red stripes. The Woking guys are in their red and white half shirts. David Haythornthwaite is just arriving okay, into okay. the stand. And even David Brand this afternoon has put a suit on. <laughs> My God, he got the suited and booted message. Your coasters line up. Jack. Yes, I can do that you for do you. You do that for us. AFC I'm going to have some of this expensive water while you do that. Freak, what a pop, that ball. Joke. AFC file come here today to take on working FC who have a massive 90 minutes ahead of them. They know the importance of this one. But can this Coasters 11 peg them down to a potential relegation to the Take National the League <laughs> South? Starting in goal is number one, Chris Neal, who replaces Theo Richardson today. Number two is Bryce Hassana. Six is Adam Long. 15 is Sam Graham. 17 is Connor Barrett. 19 is Johnny Ustabashi. 21 is Max Conway. 23 is Danny Whitehead. 24 is Dan Adshead. Number 30 is Ethan Mitchell. And number 29 is Danny Ormrod. Happy birthday for young Danny for yesterday. Wise men. Every credit walking. Oh, wow, yeah, that's superb. The Cardinals line up this afternoon to one of my favourite songs, Elvis Presley. Shall we have a go? Fools rush in. But I. But I. Can't help falling in love with fire. Anyway. Fantastic. The Cardinals line up in goal number 22, Will Yaskalainen. Two, Don Moss's Jack Cut. Can you sing? Three, the captain is Josh Casey. Four is Scott Cuthbert. 14, Reese Brown. Have a, have a go. 14 is Reese Brown. <laughs> 16, Tunji Akinola. 21, Timmy Odishina, former Coaster's favourite. 23, Jermaine Anderson. 31, Jaden Luca. That was super. 32, Curtis Edwards. 38 is Kevin Burko. 
The coasters will kick off this afternoon <laughs> at a ridiculous time of 12.15. We are about to go. The substitutes for the home side. Ricky Cabora, Lewis Walker, Manny Olikele, Dion Kelly Evans and Charlie Kendall. We've no idea who the referee is, but the coasters straightforward long by Chris Neal. And that's uh, out for the first throw-in of the afternoon going to the coasters. Coasters live the musical, says SBB. Oh, no, that was quite funny, That's to be honest. <laughs> I wonder if... Uh, go and get us on BBC's Radio Surrey at half-time. <laughs> get me on. You've got one job, Robert. Get me on. I'm going on uh, Radio Surrey at half-time. It's not bad. It's not ugly. It's not ugly. It says nil-nil. We've had 34 seconds. I'm not sure about the font, Rob. Personally, no. Well, don't get him started on fonts. Yeah, that's a fair point, actually. Uh, Martin Tyler should. You be like that? It's not. All. Martin Tyler should no, be listening not. to this. I tell you, right? People who are listening, Ben Reardon is listening. Hello, Ben. Right, Danny Omrod, the birthday boy, chasing down. And it's uh, it's down for for the first goal kick of the afternoon for Will Yaskalainen to take. He's all in green this afternoon. The layout here is a beautiful high banked stand away to our right behind the walking goal uh, the goal that they'll want to attack in the second half away to our left is an, a very well packed covered standing area the coasters fans are over on the far side in the open air in the sunshine suited and booted as walking come on the attack that'll be the first offside of the afternoon it's a crazy rule because uh, he has to wait until the player has actually made contact with the ball before it can call the offside. Yeah, it was a, a good run by the forward, to be honest. Um, right decision to go in behind Adam Long there, but didn't quite get his, his run right. The right decision made there by the assistant. Flat caps and suits is the order of the day, or suits and flat caps and beach balls over on the far side of the ground this afternoon. My watch is buzzing with messages that I can't read because I haven't got time. Kath J says it's a ridiculous time. But Kath J likes the musical idea. Should we do? Should we do? Should we do a number tonight at the end of season awards? I think that we'll get more listeners than you probably think. Yeah, yeah, I think we would. We just wanted to throw into Woking far left-hand side. Just kind of try and put a hopeful ball forward in which that. One of their fours can get on the end of it's down the side of Max Conway and Jonathan Oosterbashi. We have another throw in. Right, so, you know when you shouldn't read a message when you're on air? I shouldn't have read that one. Uh, best wishes to my good friend Rob McLeod, who's, uh, who finished up in Southport a &E and had ten ste two stents fitted in his heart. I didn't even know he had a heart. I was <laughs> 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 Kimson knew he's actually got a heart. <laughs> but like others I could mention. I'm in a right good mood. I'm in a silly mood this afternoon, folks. You might get some commentary. There's nothing happening at the moment. Costa got a throw in over on the far side, taken long down the line, looking for Danny Ormrod, who looked to be impeded a little bit. Now, Adam Long will see that safely back through to Chris Neal. It's, uh, and uh, the, uh, there'll be the usual suggestions that Chris isn't very good and he's got no parents, no doubt, when he takes a goal kick. A walking come again. Good turn by the lad. Into the box, ball's going to come across, good defending by the coasters. And a chance for Adset to bring it away. But Woking come again. They, of course, have to win and maybe hope on other results, but a win would see them safe this afternoon. That's a good foul. It was a foul, Brian. It was a good, I thought it was a good foul, but Dan said. Uh, I mean, yeah, it stopped a really promising attack there for Woking as they tried to get down the left-hand side. There was two hands on the shirt there from the low knee of... Cheltenham it was certainly a, a foul good opposition a good position for the free kick to be taken here by Woking's number 32 Curtis Edwards but he did well to avoid a card there Dan well, Ad's you, head you said he stopped the attack he did that's a yellow card it's cynical it, exactly it's just it's because it's so early that he's got away with that he Dan Ad's head but it. if that was 27 minutes on the clock that would have been a booking there no doubt in my mind there for Dan Ad's head SBB is now in already in early production mode of suggesting a uh, genres and methods uh, different musicals in different decades yeah we're on to this free kick comes in floated in away by Max Conway in the beautiful sunshine here in Surrey this afternoon Bryce Hosanna doing well in defence and that'll be yeah. the first corner of the afternoon much to the cheers 
of the home side. Peter Hall says hello from Wharton. Toner taken quickly short. Ball comes across the face of goal and away by Adam Long. Looks so I sharp. I hope we can keep him next season, Jack. Yeah, been brilliant what a signing he would be. Signed halfway through the end of that second yeah, half. Yeah, he'd be, be a brilliant addition. I'd love to see Ethan Mitchell stay as well. So there's a few players, that's a foul on. Max Conway was playing for that all day long, but he's uh, but it's a, it's a foul. Beachy's in a good mood. He is. Downs I hope he's going to dress smarter tonight, though. He looks all right. Uh, no, I know. I mean, he is. He is stylish, but I hope he go. I hope he goes uber smart tonight. Suited, booted, like the fans have today. Yes, I'm not sure I've ever seen him in a in a suit. No, be good to see him in a suit. I don't think it's happening, is it, Rob Paddock? It's not happening. I don't know why I nearly called him Jack Connor then. Yes, they have suggested that Chris isn't very good. <laughs> Didn't they? And has no parents. No, it wasn't that. Or was it not? Ah. Sam Graham down the line for Connor Barrett now. Oh, inside so to Dan Adset. Danny Ormrod making the forward run. Bryce Susanna now in this right wing position, about halfway inside the opposition half. Forced back to halfway. Sam Graham now will send that all the way back to Chris Neal with a little bit of niggle. On his ankle. That ball's gone over the top by Chris Neal. The centre half will have to be quick to it. Bryce Susanna now picks the ball up on the halfway line. Never, never gone. And, uh, no, I mean, even, even, even though we couldn't see the trust line, we knew that hadn't gone. Now Conway driving forward. He's got Ustabashi outside him. Oh, and a good tackle there on the far side to put the ball out of play. And he needed to do that, Jack. Yeah, he wasn't taking any prisoners there on a sheen. He got down to the ground pretty early on just stopped Ustabashi from getting that starting touch off that would have pushed him down the line it was good concentration there from Woking's number 21 Odashina one back by Woking but the Coasters retain possession with Mitchell it's going to be a long switch over the top Colin Barrett's making a forward run he can't quite get the touch on it at the moment but I think the Coasters come away with a throw in down that far right hand side and it will be Timmy Odashina to take it it's been the realm of Conor Barrett. The fifth house says we look all great dressed up. Yes, you do look splendid. A beautiful photograph taken at Norton Keynes. Some of you look a bit peaky blinders, but hey. Ad said now. Gets it out of the way to Max Conway and that towards that left hand side, trying to bring in Ustabashi on the left wing. Now can Ustabashi run at the defenders? Inside to Danny Whiter. Danny Whiter tries to get it up over the top, but be a drink right there for Scott Cuthbert. Yeah, he's a good player, he's Scott, Scott Cuthbert. Connor Barrett now, edge of the penalty area. Back to Bryce Hosanna. Tell you what, walking they're very, very organised so far, Jack, in defence. They've, they've all got back in numbers. And all the way back to Chris Neal. They've forced that back, well done to Walking there, who needs something from this game, Jack. They really do, um, the shape is that we're referring to. I mean, it's the least they can do is set up right and the coast are trying to get on the forward. Now, yeah, Connor Barrett. Ball across, looking for Connor Barrett. It was Conway with the with the cross. Barrett now has it, but uh, good defending again by the Cardinals. Connor Barrett going for the touchline. He's got Timmy Bryce is on it in support. Going to get into in towards Dan Adsedge. Gets it towards sort of Danny Ormrod. Cuff but away. Now hooks again away. Sam Graham will be equal to that, and he'll put that back in towards the next Chris Beach. Loses his touch. Pretty simple one there for We've got him robotic. We're back at... Do you know what I'm going to do, folks? I'm going to switch to the good old reliable hotspot. Yes, I'd suggest that. I'm going to switch over to my good old-fashioned, good old reliable. So bear with while I just sort out and take that off. To Keep talking, Jack, while I sort out the... Uh, Sam Graham will head back into play. It's one back high. Adam Long should get the better of that, but here's a chance for Woken as they're in behind here. And oh, and a good save there by Chris Neal. Reacted it so well, Chris Neal. There's no nervousness from a man who's not played for a while. Got down really quickly to his right-hand side. Got his foot out wide. And made sure the forward couldn't finish with ease. Woken will take confidence from that and will come again with Moss down the right-hand side. Easy for Adam Long to hit high and clear. Yes. And now Ustabashi tries to break away for the coasters. I'll change that internet connection when this attack is over. Ustabashi gets it out to this right hand side for Connor Barrett. Who's been outstanding this season. 
Ethan Mitchell now gets it out to Max Conway on the left hand side. Good switch by the coasters. Conway looking for some options. Where can it go? Now he goes down round the back. He's got us to bash in support on that far left hand side. Patient build up inside to Danny Whitehead. Now was to bash edge of the penalty area. Oh, skips past one man. But it's that man cuff, but again. It was absolutely brilliant clearing up, and that's going to be a throw in and a chance to connect to a different phone. So we're just going to, we've lost internet connection briefly. The 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we should be, we should be back in the room now on a different connection. Uh, should be. Oh dear, oh dear, me, me, take me to me, lightning's gone already. Me being, going quiet while I'm saying, are we, sh are we back? Right, lots of feedback on the light. Hopefully, hopefully Mank Dan, that's sorted things out and we've got things better. Better now, we'll just go for some Little bits of tweaks here. Talk, Jack. The coasters looking to find themselves some space as the ball goes into the box there. It slides out behind the goalkeeper there. Will Yaskalani is happy to see that glide away from his goal. Right. Um, Are we in business? Yeah. Somewhere over the filed rainbow. The filed warp. Right. That sounds good. <laughs> the filed warp is outstanding. Let's do the filed warp again. Okay, I think that's best now. <laughs> BBC Radio Surrey are looking perplexed. <laughs> Staying alive, sweet filed of mine from Guns N' Roses. Uh, SBB, this has got a world tour written all over it. Come back, Jack Connor, because you're going to be doing Coasters Life while we two of the world <laughs> <laughs> promoting the filed brand. Well, that'll be something, wouldn't it? Uh, we're going to start in McTeague's Bar in America. McTeague's Saloon. Switched over to his right hand side for Bryce Susanna, but no. Now Bryce Susanna does pick oh, it up, gets it in two. And uh, Bryce Susanna is down. He's only come back from injury, and I don't think the referee is going to let that be taken quickly because he wants to make sure that Bryce Susanna is fine. Again, it was very late on Hassana there. Chris 2553 says, right, Castiers is spot on. Everybody now saying much better. And Castiers says she'd come to that musical and Dorking are losing. But Dorking are down anyway. Dorking are down anyway. What else you got for us, uh, Rob Paddock? South End are leading. That puts them, does that put them into the playoff spots? Not yet. Okay. Baldershot and Halifax both drawing. So Hartlepool losing. Uh, Hartlepool uh, leading uh, against Dorking. Right, that's out for a throw in over on the far side. SBB says sweet. F uh, Mank Dan says sweet filed the man is genius, but I do enjoy filed warp. Filed warp. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suspect that Rob may have more to come, um, but but f throw into walking over on that far side. In it's a pleasant, warm day here. It's nice, lovely spring day. That's late on Mitchell there, but the coast is play on because Mitchell is back on his feet. He's been another outstanding loan signing. That's forward down for Connor Barrett, who's found himself in an offside position. I'm photographing that. That's absolutely brilliant from SBB. Um, I don't know what we, I don't know what you're going to do next Saturday, folks. Maybe we should do just a random. Yeah, go for a walk up there. Uh Talk some random the Peak District or something. Maybe we could just talk, talk some random rubbish on a Saturday afternoon. Like that would be different. Goal kick is along. Sam Graham, no, it's not. It's Ethan Mitchell with there. Always oh, landed badly as Ethan Mitchell. He's yeah, struggling on that foot, isn't there. he? So I think Sam it's Graham. I think it's from the knock he took early on, but he's back up again. 
walking, get it out to the right wing, and they're trying to get it out to the right wing, but a good tackle there yeah, by strong press. It was good, good press there by by Ethan Mitchell, showing no ill effects now from the the knock he got early on. It's out for a throw in over over on the far side. Days, uh, SBB says days without coasters live are tough. I'm not going to lie. That's nice, isn't it? Bromley won Gateshead nil in the National League. Both sides have qualified for the playoffs. It's all about that. It's all about place seven now, Rob, isn't it? In the National League. This is where we could do with the third microphone, where Rob could bring us in with the updates on the uh, on the other scores. Ustabashi now trying to drive down that right hand side, and hooked back. No, says the referee. I'd agree with him. Oh, good lad. Now can. Hosanna has just pressed that now. Can Conor Barrett get through the, the back of that? No, that'll be through to the goalkeeper. And he's forced in and he's had to force that out of the stadium. It yep. remains nil-nil here. Fairly impressive ball down the line there from Bryce Hosanna. It's really interesting to see that Hosanna and Barrett are trying to get into a team that's pushing on in attackive ways with out there traditional qualities Barrett playing a little bit more of a forward position and Hassan are taking back the traditional right back long out to Conway on that far right hand side Ustabashi is there for support if he needs him Ustabashi now does take the ball on Cups, cuts inside goes past one goes past two blocked by the third and now Walking's trying to bring it away super but uh, blocked by the by the coasters now Bryce Hosanna Barrett gets it out to Conway on that far left-hand side for the coasters. And a good tackle by, by Walking. Puts it out for a throw-in, but it's come off Con uh, Max Conway's boot. And uh, Chris Beach just having nice relaxed chats with the fourth official for a change. <laughs> It's about time they got on. Yes, isn't it? it's about time he got on with the fourth. It was bound to happen after 46 games. It was about to happen to get on with one of them. <laughs> I blame Brandon. It's been a bad influence on his dad. <laughs> what are Ebbsfleet doing against Boringwood? Nil nil, Ebbsfleet, Boringwood. Yes, which does absolutely which nothing for the table. Does nothing so far. for anything for the table. So as this, as it stands, Boringwood are down. That is correct with uh, Dorking, Kidderminster and Oxford City. Walking will stay up by a point and Ebbsfleet will stay up by about two or three. So uh, that's out. It's going to be a throw in to the coasters. 17, almost 18 minutes. I was going to say good afternoon to those listening in Bradley's this afternoon, but they've probably got NLTV on, yes. on the big screens. They should have NLTV on the screens and us on commentary, just saying. It's a shame that they can't do that. It's really. the, uh, they can do it, they just choose not to. It's, it's that Rob Paddock. <laughs> anyway. Go on it, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be... Oh, well, the coasters have kept, have kept this in. Somehow they've kept it in. Ustabashi now on the right hand side gets it to Barrett further out Barrett trying to cut in get inside adds head now in the centre of midfield it feels Jack like walking you've got about 18 players on the pitch they're pushing pressing so tight aren't they yeah they're all on their toes which is impressive to see it's and they need to be because they need to win this to be to be massive certain game for them. it's an absolutely massive game for them it's probably given them a, a lot more energy than they would have had in previous fixtures knowing what could happen if they but don't the get the right end result today? The energy isn't coming from the crowd. That's going to be on. offside. No, he's on. Oh. No, he was off. I'll hold my hand up and say I was wrong. I yeah, he, he was offside to me. No, he was off. It's, it, what happened, it's, a, it's that old classic. He's offside, but until he actually is in play, i.e. has the ball, the, ball yeah. the flag doesn't go up. Yeah. It's just daft. Uh, Bob says, after sorry, Bob, for the first time ever, late to the party. Stuart Gleeson still hasn't joined us, I don't think. I'm going to run through while we're waiting for Chris Neal to slowly take this free kick. Oh, he's taking it. Trying to find Danny Ormrod. And that's come off Danny Ormrod's head. That'll go out for a goal kick. We have Aid Wills, Bob Major, Chris 101, Big Orange Moose, Kevin 62, Filed Michael, Rachel Shannon, Damien, Damien Lee, Malky Watson in Germany, 
Chris Hammond's mum, Nat Barrett, SBB, SBB, Andy Bars, Jeannie Hall, Phil Hill, Peter Howarth, Manning Tree, Kath J, Mank Dan, Bristol Coaster, Chris 2553 and Max Bailey are the people I can name check so far. <laughs> Oldham lead Wheelstone by a goal to nil uh, that has no bearing on anything. It'll make Mickey Mellon smile. It'll make Mickey Mellon smile and that's a challenge. Cuthbert gets it back to his goalkeeper Jaskalainen. Ah, right, OK, so that's a foul by Ethan Mitchell on... Uh, And taken quickly by the home side, but Sam Graham, Sam Graham taking absolutely no prisoners there. That is out of the ground. We'll have another ball, please. Yeah, and there's cleared. a lovely bumblebee coming towards us now. There are two types of people in this world: those that can pay attention, and oh look, a bumblebee <laughs> throwing his pin tick. <laughs> Burko gets the ball across. Good cross. Good header away by Max Conway. But it'll be. Odishina gets it all the way back to his goalkeeper, Jaskalainen, who gets it out to Cuthbert on this near left-hand side, inside to Edwards. Edwards to Odishina. Odishina back to his goalkeeper, Jaskalainen, who's all in green this afternoon. Lime green, it's not your traditional, pro what I call green green, it's a lime green. And uh, slipped by, but uh, picked up by Burko now. Walking on the attack, edge of the penalty area. Can he get his shot away? And now it's the coaster's turn to block and press. And that'll go out of play. Adam Long just shatters that out of play. Good to see that the coasters can do what walking can do in Jack. And that is press and attacking packs. They weren't willing to take any pressure on there. Were they the coasters? They were desperate to take possession off Woking there as soon as possible. I believe there's a bit of an injury there. Is it? Is it? Ethan Mitchell I think it's gone Mitchell down. down again. Yeah, he's struggling, isn't he, in these opening 22 minutes? I mean, there's a couple of times that he's stopped A couple of times he's had, a, he's had quite nasty banks. I don't think he really fully recovered from the first one over in the, uh, in the opposition half. Massive shout-out to the fans over on the far side. Yeah, they've travelled in decent numbers. David Oh, no, that's... David's uh, over here. David's that's behind that's us, isn't he? spoke to him. Yes, I know, but I just wondered if he'd... And He's on our row. But every credit to the Coasters fans who... The mission was suited and booted and bring beach balls to celebrate the beach ball that we've been watching. Well, Aid Will says the balls. score is nil-nil. Uh, Mitchell is back on his feet. There's a conversation going on between Adam Long and Chris Neal. Mitchell seems to be, well, he's back on his feet. Yeah, he looks okay. Towering above Tass Waters there, isn't he? He's probably younger than her as well. Yes, probably. Has Danny Onrod had another haircut for his birthday? It was his think? birthday yesterday. I know, it was his birthday. He was 18 yesterday. Have to allow him. On the bench this afternoon for the coast is Theo Richardson, Luke Conlon, Owen Evans, Tom Walker and Jack Morris if he makes his debut. And uh, there'll be the usual derision of Chris Neal. They're doing the, oh, whoa, 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 you sh something, something. Ah, and then the ah to go with it. And that's going to go all the way through to Jaskalainen in the opposite goal. It's quiet round here, Jack, isn't it? It is. It's a, a slow burner, to say the least. Um, obviously, there's a lot of pressure being put on this Woking side by the league table. The coast is obviously just trying the best to... It's like an exhibition, really, down here in front of us, Brian, isn't it, really? Yeah, so but at least he's put out a really strong side as Chris Beach and, and shown full respect and integrity for the league. I could cite another club, I won't, who, having won the title, then seem to send out. Which, to me, you know, you've got to put your strongest side out because what you do then affects the rest of the league table. But anyway, so walking now on the attack and the coasters have put out a very very strong 11 this afternoon if you're just joining us it's chris neil bryce hosanna adam long sam graham connor barrett jonas debashi max conway danny whitehead dan said danny omrod and ethan mitchell starting 11. 
Odishin, the former coaster's man, gets it all the way back to his goalkeeper, Jaskalainen, who's looking for some options. The coasters have got four back in a straight line, well drilled. And that's going to go out for There's a suggestion. Yeah, he's offside. He's offside, isn't he? There were was shouts for a corner there, but uh, but they didn't see the offside there. Yeah, it's very on edge. Uh, thank yeah, you, yeah. Ben Reardon. Crawling is Ben. Saying it's been brilliant all every week. And we know we ain't that good, don't we? Who us? Yeah. We probably have. Well, we've made people giggle. Thanks, Ben. Chris Neal in the sunshine. He's going to send this long from the edge of his penalty area. Looking for Danny Ormrod. Can he get ahead to it? Cuthbert wants more of it. And that's come. Oh, well done, Brent. They've, they've kept it in. Lovely little nudge. Oh, and the final one is a, is a foul. Sam Graham couldn't get the first one. So he got the second one. And that's going to be the first yellow of the afternoon. Taking one for the team there. My neck's just a bit tight. I might have to just loosen my tie off a little bit. I think I tied it up too tight. You've got a bit bigger neck size than you anticipated, have you? Yeah, I'm a. F anyway. Yeah, free kick well Sam Graham got the yeah, Sam Graham took Reece the yellow card. He skipped past a couple, uh, looked to lose possession in the final moments, really, and uh, recovered it by getting his body across, using his intelligence there to win this free kick. Good opportunity for Woking, who'll potentially look for a shot on target here, Brian, maybe it's across as well. It's what you'd call Horton territory. The referee has put the longest white line down I think I've ever seen. There's a four man wall, and he's done enough of a white line for eight. Curtis Edwards is over the ball. Josh Casey, the captain, has gone to pretty much join the end of the wall. But putting a gap between the four-man wall, I think there's a gap here to, to, to Chris Neal's right. It's going to have to be some strike to beat him from there. It is, but, it, but I... It's not an easy chance. It's Through the wall. Straight into the wall and, and over the bar from Odishina. Well, well, well. He'd have enjoyed that scoring against his former club. He would have loved it when it fell to him that easily. The deflection came through the wall. I think they, they split in between the four of them. It came off Mitchell, I believe, ricocheted into the path of Odashina, who he volleyed over <laughs> from really close range. Really should have done better, Brian. <laughs> sorry, sorry I, I, I laughed over your okay. excellent analysis there. Stuart Gleeson, afternoon all, forgot about the early kickoff. He's always late. He's still. always, I mean, he's late for a three o'clock kickoff. Without, he, without fail. Honestly. Uh, Kevin62 says, as it stands, should Bournemouth beat Epsilon, it's Wilston who go down on goal difference, not Woking. So it's all, it's all up in the air. I'm just pleased we're not in it. Oh, yeah. Just pleased we're not in that mix and not having to look at flash score and see what else is happening. Scores coming in. Eastley nil, Halifax 1 is an update. And that means Halifax safe in that final playoff berth. At this moment, in that, as things stand, anything, of course, can still happen. One thing we do know is that the coasters, apart from turning up and seeing out this 90 minutes, I'd said now. No, that will go all the back. Odishina, not Odishina, because he plays for the opposition, doesn't he? Bryce is on it, all the way back to his goalkeeper. Put him under a little bit of pressure. Nilo goes long, looking for Danny Ormrod. Cuthbert had to be quick with his head, throw into the coasters. About 18, 20 yards from the walking goal line. It'll be Hosanna to take it. No rush from the coasters. Hosanna looking now for some options. He's got Connor Barrett, Danny Whitehead, and Ad said as his options. Hosanna on the touchline. Can he get inside? No, he can't. Another throw into the coasters. It'll be Hosanna again. Is he going to go for a longer one this time? No, he isn't. Still looking for the shorter option. Trying to bring Ustabashi. No, use his ad said. And that's another throw in to the coasters. Obscured by the dugout at the moment. So now he goes a bit, a bit longer in towards Danny White, uh, Danny Omrod rather. Hooked away from Akinola and. Uh, Adam Long will get this out to Max Conway on the far left wing for the coasters. Comes inside. Mitchell gets it out to Ustabashi on the left wing. Odashina putting pressure on him, but Ustabashi goes past Odashina, but cut walking win it back. Odashina gets it down that far 
line for Rhys Brown. Back to Odishina. Now, chance for them to turn and get it out to this left-hand side for uh, Burko. Burko's got Burko around to the touchline. Good block by Bryce Hosanna. Come on. And Burko at the slightest of touch. I think, what, what happened? Do you think Bryce Hosanna blew on him? Well, they went cheaply. Didn't he, Burko? Felt a little bit of contact, went down for the foul. Luca on that far side for the home side. Being pressed by two coastal defenders. Inside from Ustrich Odishina for Cuthbert. Cuthbert's got Casey on this near left hand side. Connor Barrett doing the press. Forward for Edwards. Gets it out on his near left hand side for Burko. And good defending by Bryce Hosanna. All the way through to Chris Neal in the coaster's goal. And we're going to have to have a word with uh, BBC Radio Surrey, Rob, and tell them it's Odishina, not Odessina. Because he won't tell them. Because his mum said she wouldn't, he wouldn't. Cuthbert with the head. Dan had said trying to win it. Ethan Mitchell does get ahead to it and gets it up and over. Looking for Ustabashi. It's all a bit up in the air, literally up in the air at the moment. And then Connor Barrett wins his tackle that's and he's not only won the tackle but won the throw in it's marvellous what we can see through an obscured dugout Jack isn't it can't even, we can't even see about 30 yards of the touchline be read we managed we managed all season Cuthbert managed to send it long up over the top for Brown sharp. it's inside and now out to the far right hand side for walking to drive forward and they have to drive forward because they they can't really rely on other results although other scores at the moment are saying yes they're going to be safe they need to be making sure that they secure their own destiny this afternoon here in the sunshine in Surrey and they gets it out outside to that far right hand side a good battle going on referee wants none of it he might have something about what's going on now edge of the penalty area taken off his toe by I Ethan Mitchell chance for the coasters to, to regroup it all got a bit raggy there Jack yeah, it's getting a bit tight working a desperate to move the ball as fast as he can he's had a good start there Reese Brown he's looking strong every time he gets himself on the ball corner to Woking Brian half an hour gone here it seems strange saying half an hour gone and it's quarter to one in the afternoon <laughs> corner for the home side arms aloft which means it's probably going to be a long in in swinging now the crowd are a bit excited behind that goal ball comes across and it's oh and it's headed close and he's just over the bar jack he's got to do better there my mate dan moss who got right underneath the ball to head over the crossbar into the mkj group stand there it's a free header at the back post and he really should have capitalized on it mossy and again got himself under it lifted over the bar one of woking's best chance of the game nil nil dave ready yes he is he's Playing right back this afternoon, number two. Um, Friend of mine, Dave. Just missed that opportunity then. Oh, I see. Uh, no, uh, Ed Wills, you're right. I didn't get your Trumpton reference. Uh, but no, uh, Cuthbert and um, Dibble uh, is not playing and Grubb isn't either, just Cuthbert. Um, uh, Ed Wills said, never seen O'Shea play uh, does he have a big trumpet with it? Will you stop it? Behave yourselves. Uh, and Dave Reddy said, yes, Dan Moss is playing for Kirkham. And yes, he is a friend of Jack's. And Jack did give him a wave earlier on. And, and if we've got time, he'll shake his hand after the game. I shall. And, and say hello to him. And say, we'll make time. Say enjoy the South next season. Di, Di Davis has got um, water retention Clothes issues. on. Well, the clothes on is a start, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Jackie, if you're listening. End of season hilarity. It's been hilarity all season. It's just <laughs> we kind of... It is nice to be able to just sit here and, and not worry about what the coasters do this afternoon. Yes, of course, we want to put on a show and make sure that these... I have already speak, spoken to Beachy and said, can we make sure that the players go right over have you? to the fans? Um they have done magnificent. I think best dressed today is Judy Roberts. 
Although I think I can see I can see a dicky bow tie over there. Cloney's been taken. That's going to be out. Halifax have the lead. Halifax have the lead, yeah. And, uh, Which will uh, do them something. A decent lead and little cricketer as well. Well, we'll see. Well, those days have gone, Dave Reddy, where players, uh, footballers played football in the winter and cricket in the afternoon in the, in the summer. I think Chris Balderson was probably the last great um, exponent of that particular before retiring from football and cricket and becoming a really top class umpire. Burko gets it down the line and out by Ethan Mitchell and that's up onto the it's going to roll in front of us it's going to roll down right no it's got oh. do you know it's like a bit of pinball there it was anyway we've got another ball in Casey's taking the throw in weren't waiting for that one multi-ball system in operation here at, uh, at Woking good on him Barrett can win that oh, gets it up oh. Ustabashi and he was he was caught, wasn't he? The lads, un he was unlucky there. He knew it, he knew he'd caught him, um, but it was it was purely accidental from Curtis Bit Edwards. Fortunate from a far point of view. Very fortunate. Hang on. You do it. I was just about to say that doesn't make any sense. The score update in the Vanarama National League. It's Chesterfield 1, Maidenhead United 0. Dorking 1, Hartlepool 2. Eastley 0, Halifax 1. Oldham 1, Wheelstone 0. Gateshead 0, Bromley 1. South United 1, Rochdale 0. And Barnet 1, Kidderminster 0. It's also 1-0 to Dagenham and Redbridge against Aldershot Town. Oh, massive you for Halifax. Up that. to date with National League scores as Danny White prepares to take this free kick. Just inside his own half towards the... Left hand side for the coasters. Tries to get John Ustabashi in play. Can I throw something out there? To yes, the, to throw something listening. out there to the people There's listening. There's 81 of you tuning in, and we've had no decisive statement about player of the season. So I'm going to throw this out there to you folks of 37 minutes on the clock, seeing as we haven't got a lot to talk about so far. I'd like from everybody in that chat to give us your AFC filed player of the season and your AFC filed most improved player of the season. Uh, should we do ours or should we give it half an hour? We'll give it half an hour. We'll give it half we'll an give hour. We'll give it half an hour. I've got mine. Mine's, Folks, mine's nailed on. I've voted. Please, please get your comments in. Yeah, I'd love to read what you have to say. Your, your player of the season. Your player of the season. Most improved player of the season right. also. Right. John Ustabashi is straight in with Max Bailey. Max Bailey says most. No, we don't want most. We want most improved. Max Bailey obviously watched a lot of John Ustabashi at Chorley last season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ed Will says Nick. Connor Barrett, Connor Nick Barrett. Horton. Andy Gorham and Ian Botham to name. Ian Botham was the last third division player to put Captain England. A cricket player, wasn't he? Ethan, Ian Botham? Yeah. Yeah, he was the last third division player to Captain England. The only third division player to Captain England. Ball comes in from Edwards. Cuthbert, back post. Ustabashi on defensive duties. Managed to hook it clear. Shouts of handball. Free kick. About 20 yards out, and uh, another yellow card? No, he's just getting no, his spray out. Not for that, a bit rash, but nothing more Three, than a foul. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You know what? Did you see the, the average length of step there? It was really, really crazy. Uh, most improved, Max Conway. Uster Bashi, player of the season. Conor Barrett, most improved. Player of the season, Nick Horton. Bashi, player of the season. John Uster Bashi. Uster Bashi says Chris 101. Good first season. Lots first of love trolley, coming man. in. Former It's a man. long way out this. Five in the wall for the coasters as we approach half time. Just seven minutes left. There'll be one to add. Got a feeling about and this. That's long and it's high and it's out the ground. And yeah, that was not You've great. You've got the car keys. Uh, Rob, just go and check the car, will you? I'm not sure we're going to need them anymore after that. Or Looks like Sheena. we're going back on the. Uh, yeah. On, the, on the team coach or supporters coach, I don't yes. think our car will be intact after that free kick from Odashida, who must have known where our car was and thought, sorry, I'll just aim for the car. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a no-go. Right, right. Most improved Theo, says Dave Reddy. That is a hell of a shout. Most improved Danny Ormrod. Danny Ormrod, most improved. Um, Danny Ormrod, Dave Wilson. I'm only here for the comedy gold. Well, <laughs> tune elsewhere. Uh, Max Bailey, most improved. Ethan Mitchell, best player. Bashi, says Max Bailey. 
They're coming in thick and fast. They are. It's, it's nice. Manning Tree, you haven't commented yet. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Oh, that's another free kick, is it? Yes. Thoughts on the first 40 minutes, Brian? Rubbish. Moving on, next question. Okay. There's been nothing to shout about, nothing for either side. Um, neither goalkeeper has made a save. No. Neither side has had a, a meaningful shot. It feels like the tempo's a little bit flat. It's flat. Well, the coasters don't need to bust a gut this afternoon. Um, players out of contract. Why would you risk injury this afternoon when it could be your last game for the club and you need a, you need another club? So That's a fair um, point. you know, um, Beachy's been having a chat for the first forty minutes. He has. He's, yeah, Still he's, chatting he's down just there. chatting away, isn't he? Yeah. Um, how do you? And I'm going to have a chat with them. I'm going down in the changing room after the game. I'm going to go and say thank you to every single one of them. I've already said Good. thank you to, to Beachy and. Nick Anderson, what have, what have you got to say? So, right, let's have a look. Player of the season, Connor Barrett, most improved, Danny Ormrod. Connor Barrett, most improved, Theo Richardson, said Jeannie. Um, <laughs> Sarah <laughs> Megamix, I'm working fan listening in Northumberland. Woking fan listening. Welcome aboard, Sarah. We, uh, thank you for your kind words. Hello, Sarah. Um, I, I do genuinely, we, we, want to, we want you to stay. We want to come back. Because to be honest, to be honest, Sarah, we genuinely do not want to go to Boring Wood next season. It cost us 50 quid to, to bring this rubbish. I mean, this isn't worth 50 quid, is it? <laughs> great chance. <laughs> Albert, oh, Ostebashi now driving down that left-hand side. And a great well tackle by Super. Timmy Odeshina. Away back to his goalkeeper who sends it long and out over to that far side. And I'd like to say, Andy Debs says, player of the year, Conor Barrett. Chris 101 says, Russ Conway is the most improved player for his piano playing. One for the kids there, Chris. Um, Bob Major says, player of the season, Uster Bashi, most improved, Danny Omrod. And uh, SBB says, welcome, Sarah Megamix. For those who don't know, Sarah, uh, so Sarah, Sarah, thank you for joining us. Who's your woking player of the year, Sarah? We'll, we'll include you. We're an inclusive organisation here. So who's your woking player of the year? Um... Manning Tree was going to say Ustabashi, but didn't know how to spell his name. That made me chuckle. <laughs> and, uh, SBB says, is it worth 51? <laughs> Long towards uh, Brown. Brown still has it. Oh, no. Uh, oh, and across the face of goal, and a great header away by Max Conway. Conway again. Handball, maybe. Sh lots of big shouts of handball. The linesman or assistant referee on the far side, Jack, completely unmoved, who had a better view of everything. Ball now does come across for Burko in the penalty area. Oh, and he managed to skew it wide. Good idea, though, going across the face of goal. I mean, you've got to go across the keeper from there. He was furious with himself, Burko, as soon as he saw the ball had flown past the post. He had a really good opportunity to get a shot on target there, and as soon as he struck it, I mean, he didn't really give himself a chance at all. Chris, Chris Neal, excuse me, had... It all covered. And who's down? Who's down over there, Jack? Is it Ethan Mitchell again? It's. Uh, Do you know what? It's, it's a time wasting thing. Isn't I it? think it's Danny Whitehead. It is Danny Whitehead. Uh, it's just a bit of. Um, Jeannie Hall says, ready for the whistle, need my dinner. Well, you should have planned it. We had a breakfast, didn't we? Yeah. We were first in that queue, weren't we? We were. We were queuing up outside. They weren't even open when we got to Norton Keynes today. Wasn't absolutely amazing. No, It'll but do. it was a breakfast, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It needed to, needed to happen. Uh, and uh, Ada Jones says, Whitehead, BP, Armrod. Uh Sarah Megamix, do, do, give us your, do give us your walking player of the year because uh, we're an inclusive organisation here. Uh, we are going to bring full match commentary every game next season. We've done it every game, haven't we? I'm pretty sure. It would be silly if we didn't. We've done every game. We have done, for the first for the first time in a long time, we have managed to bring every single game. We missed Gillingham last season. Yes. But we have brought you every game. And I'll tell you what, we're proud of that. Um, it's been a bit of a battle sometimes to be able to bring you the, the full match commentary. So we've managed to do, between myself, Jack Ekman and Jack Connor. We have brought you every single Coasters game this season, home and away. Indeed. And, uh, and we thank you all for listening, for joining us, for joining in the chat, uh, because we really, 
we'd look a little bit silly if we didn't have people listening to this dribble. We are still waiting for Danny White to get back to his feet. Yeah, we're not way. actually... There's nothing happening on the pitch. <laughs> like much of the last 44 minutes, there's not been a lot happening. Even Chris Beach has been subdued. I mean, there's, even, isn't he, he's not been anime, ani, ani, talkative, has he? Say again. Say animated Animated. Or That's the one I was after. Oh. Animated. Well done. We finally get round to Christopher Neal taking, and there are going to be four minutes of added time. Four minutes will be added. Are you off somewhere? No, no, I'm just, I'm just checking up on my opposite number down there. He's, he's good. He's good, that guy. He's good. Yeah. I'll introduce myself later. Okay. Edwards for the home side. Gets it inside. Uh, Anderson, it was. Anderson still has it. Gets it forward. Is Casey going to get involved? No, it stays with Burko. And hooked away. Now... Hosanna tries to get it get it forward. Cuthbert has it on halfway. Neat play by the home side. Edwards trying to switch play over to the right hand side using Odashina on halfway. Broken out by Max Conway. Conway sends Ostabashi down the line, but it's come off a walking player off Edwards, it was for the throw in to the coasters. Yeah, nothing special that down the left. Oh yes. <laughs> uh Kath J says, you'll tune in every time Sarah Mega Mix after this experience. No, she won't, Kath. Come on, let's let's have it right. Um, Jack Ekman says, Thanks, what goes Kath. up but never comes down? Go on, you tell me. What is it? Uh, Stalagmite. Go on, let me just get it. Uh, Max, what? Uh, Malky Watson says, yes, Coast is live, missing, drilling him away. Made it, he jumped on a plane from Germany so he could be there, so he could get it live. He did. Stalagmite. Yeah. Stalagmite. Ed is so great for you keeping me uh, oh, in Leicester in touch with the coasters. Kathy, I've missed so much this year, but great for you guys are still there commentating uh, and entertaining us. Um, do I need to introduce myself? Surely he's heard of you. <laughs> do you know what? I met somebody the other day who hadn't, who hadn't heard of me, Ed Whip, but he has now. <laughs> Trust me. He was a stupid person. And who I knows what stalagmite is? I've just had to Google it. Um, a bit of water dropping you down see, in the You see, Kath J knows what I'm on about. Stalactites and stalagmites. Did you not do geography? I did, actually. Whoever, whoever thought we'd get stalagmites and stalactites into a football commentary? I bet Radio Surrey haven't done that. So what's going to happen at half-time? <laughs> You're coming on here and I'm going over there. <laughs> we'll see if I can get on Radio Surrey. Ormrod, the birthday boy, needs out for a throw in to, to Woking. God, I tell you what, I don't know how we've managed to get through this. It's rubbish, isn't it? The football? Yeah. I forgot it was on. It's absolute. It's fine. Oh, my God, so many of you chilling. coming in with comments. <laughs> Jeannie wants the raffle numbers. I'm not yet, Jeannie. And then there isn't a golden goal before anybody asks. That's mine. If one of them does come over here, I am head. Right. Right, what else have we got? Uh, Andy Barr's calcium build-up. Look it up. Anyway, what does go up and never comes down? I'm waiting for the chat to tell me. Oh. I'm not giving the answers out. Max Bailey says, all three of you have been quality throughout the season, whether it's tolerating my coaster's live coming out or keeping us updated when I'm not away game. Nothing but thanks and respect. Now, come home and get leathered. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to Google Stalling Mites, but, uh, but Jack did. Mangtan says, thank you for travelling up and down the country to bring oh us coverage God. of those of us who can't make it. Um, thank you, that other splitter, Jack, too. It's been a very right, mixed please. season of frustration, anger, disappointment, and hope, elation and relief. Wouldn't have it any other way. And uh, Right, so Edwards with the free kick for the home side, and then I'll bring you Malky Watson's comment. Edwards then is going to float this into the box. and that must be. And it, it is, is in. The opener. It is in. Floated in. And uh, Akinola, I think, who's got it, got it at the end of it, Jack. Yeah, you're spot on, Brian. Yeah, it was floated into the box. And it was left pretty free, really. It was a great free kick. 
Yeah, it was just lofted into a really good area, the edge of the six-yard box for Akinola to knock in, really. It was almost impossible for him to miss from the angle that he made contact with the ball. And to be honest, he nearly did. It came off the inside of the post and bounced past Chris Neal. Good stadium but announcement. I can tell you then that the difference that makes right now is that it's pushed walking three places up, Sarah, to 55 points. Boreham would still hold that fifth and final uh, fourth and final relegation place but that has made Wheelstone uh, one nil down they have dropped just above Boreham Wood so right now it's between Wheelstone and Boreham Wood for that final berth that's your time up for the first half and now Beachy gets animated although he's having a bit of a giggle with the fourth official he's alright he's alright isn't he um, every credit. I mean, of the choice between going to Boreham Wood next season and coming here, I'd have some of this every day of the week, Jack. Yeah, most certainly. It's uh, not been the most of entertaining first half, to be honest, but the atmosphere is nice. Everyone has turned up well and given us some really nice animated versions of themselves coming into this one this afternoon. Brian, you want to... We want, get, we want Martin Tyler on at half time. You'd like to speak to Martin Tyler? Yeah, we're going to get Martin Tyler on. Now it's, you know, there's something for them to play for, there's something to hang on to. It is. Um, and, you know, he, knowing his involvement with, with Woking, oh, we get the chairman on. One of the two, one of them one will of say the yes. Two. Well, David, David's on his way down the steps. Let's grab okay. Martin, let's grab Martin. Oh, well, you can speak to him. He's not coming he yet. He hasn't moved, he hasn't moved yet, has he? No, I doubt he will, let's be honest. Oh, easy four minutes, Dave Brown. Easy, easy. Should have been six. There you go. Where's he gone? Where's Martin gone he's, to? He's continuing to stay he's, there. He's, well, go and get him. Go I didn't. I didn't do that. Hey. Right, I've got Max Bailey. I've just met Martin Tyler half an hour before kickoff. Had a good ten-minute conversation. Jack with him. Wants to, right, let's let's have a look. Uh, Malky Watson says his trip to Gellingham was worse. He scheduled a supply meeting at nearby Rochester and ended up in the same team as the uh, same hotel as the team. Kath J said he dre she dreaded geography many moons ago. Fascinating things are stalagmites and stalactite. Um, SBB has answered your question. What goes up and never down? My belief in the coasters. I can't believe that no one's got that yet, to be honest. I'm easy to lift but hard to throw what I might. Will you stop doing that? Stop it. Yes, sir. Um, right, so Sarah Megamix is going to be addicted to us now. Uh, we, are, we are here. We're here every week. Uh, Max Bailey, this afternoon's winning raffle ticket numbers are 1111, 2222 and 3333, says Max Bailey. Unlucky. Radio Surrey have gone off or I'd go and join them on our... On right. Are you going to ask Martin Tyler for the interview or am I going to ask him? You are. Right, I'm going to mute my microphone. I'm off to... Oh. Well, I'll Okay, fine. Be careful, don't trip over that. Well, Brian's gone for the... Hopeful interview away there from Martin Tyler, obviously. Former Premier League level commentator, been on Sky Sports for a long time, lost his role at the end of last season and has moved on to bigger and better things this season. Brian's doing his utmost to try and get him to have a word of us on Coasters Live, which would be the biggest possibility that we could have had so far. What do you mean, possibility? And he is coming over. Hi, Martin, you okay? Come over to join us, which is very kind of him. Shall I, I give him my headset? You're doing the interview, are you? Do you? No, you're doing it. I'm doing the you're interview. You're doing it. You're okay. going to speak. You give your headset then. Uh, I yeah. know I'm going to give it. Yeah. So we are. Hi, we Martin, are. We okay? are joined now by a broadcasting legend and um, and lifelong uh, walking. Well, he's going to tell you the, in the involvement of walking. Will you please welcome live on coasters? No, no, you're doing the interview, Jack. Please welcome Mr. Martin Tyler, broadcasting legend. Thank you. You have to tell him. You know, you know uh, well, I do. I've got them on in the right direction now. Um, well, it's only halfway. It is. <laughs> I've been a Woking fan since 1953. I stood just to the right of where we are, um, came on the bus with my mate. I was eight years old, and those days you could go to football when you were eight years old on your own. I'm sure there are a lot of parents listening who say, well, I wouldn't let my kid do that now. But started an adventure and I think a lot of people listening know where the adventure has taken me to. I fell in love with football in this stadium. 
indeed. Um, and you've had a really entertaining season at level. I mean, you've not done as well as you would have hoped, to be honest, but a good start in these first 45 minutes. How do you think that the rest of the game is going to go? Are you happy with your side's performance so far, Martin? I think the uh, four chances, good chances, were missed. And when you know that the, the drawing would be enough, but you can't really play for a draw, and you wonder about those chances coming back to haunt the lads uh, later on in the day. But the goal right in the 50th minute, from, I have to say, and from a fire point of view, I think it was a very soft free kick it was. that was given. Um, Jermaine Nansen, I coached here for four years, and Jermaine Nansen was one of our, there's only about two or three left from, and we left in 2022, and he was when we brought in. He's clever with his feet. And, yes, um, he looked good. And then the finish from um, uh, a young man who's having his first season here from about an inch, really. It was uh, an unmissable chance. Yeah, it got in eventually. So um, it's difficult for Woking. They've obviously got the incentive. They've got a lot to play for. Fire, they've done very well not to be in Woking's position, I think. And um, yeah, I hope it passes peacefully um, and we get through. I don't mean peacefully in terms of any hostility here, but from Woking's nerves point of view, peacefully. Just a great time to score. Superb, yeah, and you've had a, a really good first half as well, getting on the right end. I think that Reese Brown's looked really strong up front. You're number 14. Mm. He's backed into our defenders really, really well. Do you think that he's had a good impact on this game? Yeah, he's been injured for a lot of the season, and I think if uh, Reese had been able to play more often, Woking wouldn't be in this position. But you're right, he's probably been the liveliest player on the pitch, I think, and he's not the biggest, and he's playing up front. They need to anticipate his touches a little bit more. I think there are one or two balls that he's won that surprise his teammates, really. Um, and maybe now with a goal to the good, a little bit more wriggle room, so to speak, that uh, they will find a bit more room to, to push on. But it's a, it's a, a devilishly difficult scenario <laughs> to play in when the future of the club, I'm, when I was here, um, we, we went full time for the first time for a long time. Well, it had been full time before, but um, promotion from the National League South and uh, then we waited a year and then the club allowed us to go full time. And I was coming here wondering whether they were what was whether that was at stake as well not just the the status in the league whether the, yes. that would that would change for a lot of people it would um, it would be very difficult so there's a you never celebrate staying up when you're in this position you but you can get the joy from it and at the moment the joy is starting to just starting to get into the veins but i've been around a long time and you never take anything for granted I couldn't have said it any better myself. Those supporters have been really good so far. They've got behind their side and they look really excited for the second half. Do you think they can push your side onto staying up here over the last 45 minutes? Well, I hope so. I mean, the club have done very well to sort of market the uh, the opportunity that you don't want really to get. If we were playing for nothing, you'd probably be maybe a third of the crowd that's in. So I would say probably around 4,000 here. Um, and yeah season tickets will be on sale <laughs> for the na hopefully National League that. hopefully not for the National League South indeed well uh, I'd like to say thank you so much for coming on no, you obviously didn't need to do it and I really appreciate your time obviously you're well, a legend I appreciate of the game. We, we met actually outside the listeners don't know this but um, you were telling me about your first season in the job and yes, sir. Um, you're doing very well and I wish you every success you've got 49 seasons to go to catch up with me <laughs> <laughs> hard work starts now <laughs> yeah good luck to you no, thank you so much I appreciate it's your nice time and I appreciate you spending Cheers. some time with us pleasure thank you. cheers Thank you, Martin. Please enjoy the rest of your day. I really appreciate well, it. Our thanks to, to, to the broadcasting legend that is, uh, that is Martin Tyler there. God, my I'm so clammy. My hands are sweating. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was amazing. Jack that cannot amazing. believe what I've just amazing. done to him there. Brian, thank you very yeah, my much. My pleasure, you so Jack. Much. Really it's just what. Thank you so much. You know, I. It's live. Oh, that was. I've only, swear. I've, ah! only, I've only just. Uh, no, I'm going off. I need to. He's, he's all excited now. He's just so. Oh. He's, bu he's buzzing now, and you know what? And you know what? And and now and I'm buzzing as well because I just brought him that opportunity. And it, the, the, one of the best things I do, yeah, yeah, following I'm AFC on. file and home and away and whatever I do, I just I, I, to to give people moments they won't forget, and and I do this quite regularly uh, at Mill Farm, and I don't plan any of it, and that certainly was not planned. I literally just went along and said, Martin. Will you come and talk to us on Coasters Live? And knowing the type of man that Martin Tyler is, and you find well he was going to say yes. And then there was only one man to do that interview, uh, and that was Jack Ekman, because I don't aspire to be uh, a, a, a BBC Five Live commentator and travel the world. I'm too old to be even starting about that job. But Jack Ekman has absolutely got a future in broadcasting and what he needs to do is clip that out uh, and get that sent off. And this is the time I interviewed 
Martin Tyler, and and I'm and you know what? I'm just so proud to to have done him that. Mike then says, guys, that was lovely. Uh, Rachel says, you've got this, Jack. Um, should have gone to say it's live. You don't need to do that with a legend that is Martin Tyler. Martin Tyler knew fine well he was live. Um, and SBB says it was great that you handed that right off to Jack. Um, uh, and his words at the end. Of the I'm, do you know what? I'm actually going to have to listen to that back because I didn't hear most of it because it, it was through headphones. It was done through can. So I'm going to... Um, so the, the words... Um, Malky Watson wants us to get mellifluous into the half into the second half. We will do that. Uh, Kevin62, loving your interview with Martin Tyler. I can always hear Aguero. Yes, of course, he was the one that called that that goal for Aguero. Cast J says, thanks, Jack and Martin Tyler. Great interview. Uh, Malky says the words at the end to Jack actually made me emotional. Um, thank you, SBB. That's just what I do. Um, Rachel says, you've got this. Uh, guys, that was lovely. Um, uh, well, well done, Jack. Uh, I didn't get on to BBC Radio. Sorry. No. Am I on? Can you hear me, folks? I mean, I think we're Sadly, all just, yes. we're all just digesting that moment—a moment that I don't think Jack will will ever forget, Brian. So, every credit to you for that. I, I know that that will mean a lot to him. Um, I think he's gone for a little cry, actually. Yeah, it was a special moment, mate. It was a really special moment, and. As you say, we want to create moments for people. It's all about what working in football is, creating moments for for people. And it's it's even better to give a moment to someone who's really helped me out since I joined the football club, Brian. And I think this is probably the best time for me to say now that um, I'm actually going to be leaving the football club at the end of the season. Um, have you said... Have you, uh, uh, I've not resigned yet. <laughs> uh, but, um, but, but he's doing it now, yeah, folks. He's actually doing it live <laughs> on air. <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> Dear people, of, do, you want me to, do you want to have a word with the stadium announcer? <laughs> I can do that. You know I'll do that. You will do it, but you're not going to. Um, on behalf of all the walking fans, we'd like to wish Rob Paddock <laughs> all the very best in his new job as he leaves the head of me. Media and AFC filed. <laughs> <laughs> Rob and I have had some really, really good conversations over the last few weeks. Um, and Rob has found this job very, very challenging uh, alongside some very difficult um, personal challenges that we won't go into because this is neither the time or the place. But uh, he's worked so, so hard at this job and and there was nobody more than me wanted this to work for him but it, it hasn't worked and it isn't working and I've seen I've seen changes in Rob from when he came in and you get to a point where I've told Rob what this job was doing to him because when you're in the middle of it you don't you don't really see it um, but but that has come as a bit of a bolt I knew he was thinking about leaving. I didn't realise he was going to do it live on air. <laughs> You'll have to continue now, yeah, son. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want to take away from, from Jack's moment or take away from the fact that we've still got 45 minutes of, of National League action to go. Um, and I don't also want to take away from the fact that I'm very intent on making sure that going into 24-25, we have the, the best possible output um, for for the media team and, and, and the wider AFC File Football Club. But, um, yeah, as Brian mentioned there, it's been a very difficult time for me personally. And uh, a, a new season will be a new beginning. And who knows where we'll go into 24-25 in. But what we do know is we've got 45 minutes left of football. And the coasters and are the coming coasters out. Are back, so the coasters are back. So I'm going to gonna mute Rob because I don't know where Jack's gone. Um, I, I think he's probably still quite overwhelmed by that. And So, um, oh, I'm off. Am I on? No, I'm. I don't You're off. No, I'm off. You're off. I'm off because because what I did was I pressed the wrong button. Ah. Yeah. Bye, folks. Now you're off. Okay. Right. Um, SBB says thanks for everything. Uh, well done. Uh, SBB says wow, putting your notice in live. Yeah, that's a. Uh, um, Max Bailey says Martin now the second best special guest you've had in course of life. Not a chance, Max Third Bailey. Best. You're not having that one. Um, Edwell says, well done, Jack. Um, Stuart Glynn says, Re resigning alive on air, just like Scylla Black. Surprise, surprise, Chuck. Uh, Kath J says, Jack's a natural and I'm a great mentor. Thank you, that. Um, and SBB says, thank you, uh, thank you 
Uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, Rob's been fantastic, says Kath J. All the best for new beginnings. I have no idea where Jack Ekman has got to. Shall it will I be Woking to kick off. I will mute that and start it again. Can you go and find him, please? I will. He's got, um, he's got 45 minutes of commentary to do. We're the filed white army. <laughs> I love these people down here. They're absolutely fantastic. Been on the today, haven't Not yet. We haven't been Not on the Baroque. We're off. We're on the second half. I've started my watch. I got rudely interrupted then by a walking fan who's cost me three seconds. Walking on the attack now. They lead here 1-0. Adam Long with the header. Here's Jack Ekman back. <laughs> Have you had a moment? No, no, no. You're back up. You're on there. I'm back on. Hello, everybody. Sorry oh. about that. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, right. Lots of comments coming in. Oh, hang on. Am I off now? I muted myself. Have we swapped headsets? No. We have. Oh, have, have we? One. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, okay, then. Say, yeah. Thanks, sir. We're, I think we've, I think we've plotted the leads now. <laughs> They're all tangled up. We'll sort it out by the end of the game. Um, there's been a suggestion that we've been on the Barocas, Jack Ekman. Uh, yes, we could get up very early. We did, we did. All right, Sam Graham. Hosanna down the line for Conor Barrett and out of play over on that far side. Can we just call it off now? Max Bailey says, nothing but praise for Rob. Top guy, privilege to work with you. Uh, he's okay for a West Brom fan. Yeah. Nathan Midgley uh, says he couldn't afford to get here today. We could open the shop. Yeah. Can I just say, I've been reading the comments now about that interview. Thank you very much for letting me take that. I appreciate it. I've got to listen back to it. We'll have to listen to that back on the way back because uh, Malky Watson says he got quite emotional. So I know. I just I want to put on air that I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. It was very kind of you to let me take that. Just what I do. My heart's on fire. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, Cuthbert sends it all the way back to Yaskalainen. Should we just say walking of one? We'll go on. We'll have a nice party tonight. Will that be all right? There's a lady there. She, she. Oh, munchies. Munchies. Just saying. My favourite sweets of all time. Wow. Just putting that out there. <laughs> There's a man along there. He can't believe we get away with this. <laughs> I listened to Graham Liver on Radio Lancashire on, on Monday weekdays, and I've listened to uh, my mentors have been Graham Liver with his style of broadcasting and uh, Dan Jewell with his style of commentary. Put those two together, it's a recipe for carnage. Do you want some live score, Brad? Oh, go on then. So, going into the second half, folks, these are the scores from around the Vanamarama National League. It's Chesterfield 2, Maidenhead United 0, Dorking Wanderers 1, Hartlepool United 3, oh. Eastleigh 0. FC Halifax, FC Halifax Town 1, Oldham Athletic 1, Wheelstone 1, Woking 1, AFC Fylde 0, Gateshead 0, Bromley 1, Altrincham 1. Oh, good effort. Good strike. Al almost there. Um, almost there, we were interrupted. Um, we'll, we'll carry on with the, with the scores. Altrincham 1, Oxford 0, Southend 1, Rochdale 1, Solly All Moors 0, York City 0, Barnick 3, Kidderminster Harriers 0, Dagenham and Redbridge 1, Aldershot Town 0, and Boreham Wood 0, Ebsfleet United 0. Um, and I'll now pass over to Brian Porter to give you an explanation of that close chance to making it 2-0. If he remembers well, it. I missed it. Yeah, it was a good effort. <laughs> it was a good effort. He came in left-footed, uh, great shot just wide of Chris Neal's right-hand post. There'll be no more interruptions with scores that do not affect us, because the only ones that affect us... Oh, Dyes managed to fall over the steps. Dave Brand's on, been on the show. He's got to interrupt Do you want to get on commentary. Brandy? No, we're not putting Brandy on. He's been on the Brandy. We're not putting Brandy on. What's up now, Brandy? Eh? I, you, you carry on, Jack. I'll mute myself just in case. What am I, I'm, I'm trying to understand up. what's going on, folks. I mean, Max Conway has possession of the ball. He's pressed by Dan Moss. Adam Long will go high away towards halfway. Should go up in the air to be won by Whitehead. Bit of back to front football here from Woke and it's not high and away by Cuthbert and it'll come through oh, oh. easily <laughs> after all that folks all day Brand is doing is complaining about the food and the fact they haven't got any Peroni <laughs> people need to hear it what did you want do you have, do you have a little sherbet earlier on a little sherbet no I did not 
I've been uh, had uh, I've had a bottle of water. That's it. Uh, uh, I've got no sherbet for me today. I did. I, I must confess, I did enjoy a little a little red before the game started, and it was very nice. What red was it? It was a Merlot. Yeah. Mm. Go to, isn't it really? It was half the price it charges at Mill Farm. But anyway, walking come again now into the penalty. This could be two 0 He must shoot. He must shoot. Oh, and it's just wide of the post. Yeah, took a deflection. But as things stand, walking are safe. Chris Beach is not happy now. He's gone off. He's gone off. Uh, smiley, happy face. Uh, somehow that's a corner. Oh yeah, it took a deflection from the shot to bounce away from Chris Neal's goal. I mean, I managed to catch it. Chris Beach has obviously not got much to play for here today, and he'll happy to let the coasters do their own thing over these next 90 minutes. But he won't be happy with. A lacklustre performance here for the next 40 minutes no, or so. No, it won't. Uh, ball comes across away. That's must be a goal. Nil. Yeah. With good strike as well. And that's going to ensure their safety, isn't it? Yeah, massive goal. 2 0 up against the Coasters. It's uh, Akinola with his second of the game. And you can see the relief and the joy around the stadium here. I mean, uh, now they're staying to see we are staying up, we are staying up. I mean, look at that stand over to our left, Brian. Absolutely fantastic to see. It's party time. It's party time here. As Woking look to have secured their National League safety. I mean, who doubted it? Oh, he's <laughs> you know what? The stadium announcement is just like me when the home team scored. He's just like me. <laughs> yeah, massive moment for this Woking side. They can... Tell you what, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Celebrate. We're going to swap places and I'll call the third goal and he can do it on here. <laughs> How does that, that sound? <laughs> we like it down here. I've no idea how many Coasters fans have made it. I'll, uh, enough to fill a coach, Nathan. Yeah, I think we may have to make a change, Brian, It looks soon. like it. Nilo's, uh, Nilo's struggling down there. Look, folks, we're 2-0 we're down. Uh, the gaffer won't be happy, but look... When you look at where we were in October, and you know what, we, we were there when, when Oxford were confirmed as relegated when they played us at, at Mill Farm, and I don't want to do it to another club, so, unless it was Bournemouth. Of course I'd rather we're willing. Um, so Chris, ne Chris Neal able to continue. He's all right, because Tass has worked, worked her magic. Chris Beach is now less jovial but there's a lot of relief around the stadium here yeah, they're I'm enjoying crossed. that the munchies went everywhere on that second goal though all over the place they need to come for a looking for a third they've got their tails up now of walking ball comes across again and that'll be out away by long and Ustabashi trying to get it down the line i tell you what now that walking you know what they're going to do jack they're going to show us what a good side they are now oh yeah they're going to the actually show us what a good side they are. Well, they've got the confidence that has eluded them for most of this season. They finally got their tails up, as you mentioned, a couple of minutes ago. And it's a good chance to build on a, a pretty poor season, to be honest. They'll take a lot of confidence from this going into next season, I would have thought. And the courses will take a lot of confidence in what they've... Phil Heald is with us. Good, good afternoon, Phil. Chris Hammond's mum. I'm going to name, name check as many as I can because uh, I'm not sure how many I've got. In the first half, RVH1, Fylde Michael, Cricklewood, Jack Ekman, Chris 101, Nathan Midgley, Shezza, Kath J, Andy Debs, Aid Wills, Jimmy Cross, Sophie Luxton, John Richards, Malky Watson, Stuart Gleeson, Bristol Coaster, Max Bailey, Ben Reardon, Bob Major, Big Orange Moose, Kevin 62, Rachel Shannon, Chris Hammond's mum, Nat Barrett, SBB, SBB, Andy Baz, Phil Hield, Peter Howarth, Manning Tree, Chris 2553. What's happened to Sarah? Sarah has seems to have disappeared. Sarah is the walking fan. Oh, she's in the bar now. Well, uh, you know what? Fair play. <laughs> Maybe she thought we'd go off at half time. Conor Barrett now trying That's to a foul. He says, <laughs> foul there. And Dan had said claiming there and saying there was an advantage there. Maybe, re uh, but he, he d the referee in fairness couldn't see Dan had said on the blind yeah, side. Blind side's brilliant, isn't it? And Mitchell having having a go at the referee now. Well, about 35 to go. Two goals to the good are woking. As it's pretty much sailed on that they'll be staying in the National League next season. Good noise being made on our far left-hand side. It's a very high line for the, for the free kick that Walken have taken. 
out to Sam Graham on that far right hand side. Fucks it over the top looking for Connor Barrett. Connor Barrett gets it up into the air, but that'll be a throw into Woking. Nothing I've got much a in there. chat message that I can't see, Jack. Refresh your browser. It's nothing important. It's Nathan Midgley. Oh, well, it doesn't matter then. Glad, <laughs> glad that Max is going nowhere. <laughs> eh? Commentary on Max is going nowhere. No, well, we know Max is going nowhere, well, except to the bar tonight. Doesn't do that, does he? He goes to the coffee machine. I yeah, think. he goes to the coffee machine on account of his age. Goal kick to the... What is it, a music video? I think he's got West Brom on, no, on his uh, phone. Big fan of EE, are you? Other. Right. Thank you so much to all of you who've listened to us uh, throughout the season. It really is a pleasure to bring you this. Uh, whether it's been good or it's been bad or it's been indifferent, and today's indifferent. She is still here, Sarah. Oh, excellent. Sarah, you'll be absolutely delighted uh, with how your team is doing this afternoon. And, uh, and we're delighted that you're delighted because, to be honest... We are. To be honest, we'd rather come here than Boreham Wood. Today, uh, uh, walking are currently saving us £50 for next season to commentate. Don't be getting ideas. Talk. But three quid for a bottle of water is a bit steep. Just saying. However, the wine wasn't all that dear. <laughs> free kick. Ethan Mitchell's won a free kick in the centre circle. I'm not picking the chat up, so if you can bring us up to date with the chat, Jack, that'd be really helpful. I can do that for you, Mr Porter. I think what I'll do is bring Here's it. Connor Barrett Looking to stand up his man on the far left hand side tries playing it up it's intercepted by Anderson in midfield and that'll be a free kick to Woking as Connor Barrett just looked to lift the urgency in terms of winning the ball back he's caught Anderson on the on the back of his heel really causing him to to go down it's going to be a, a chance for the Cardinals to restart here. Two goals to the good. They'll be happy with their current league position. Sat just behind, filed on goal difference currently. The two goal lead that they have over the coasters means that they're sat in 17th place. And realistically, both on 55 points, both on a negative seven goal difference. Not much separating the sides. All over the top. Brown here for the Cardinals, Woking. Edge of the boxes, Edwards. He's waiting for me to come in offside against walking there. Uh, Sarah, still here, nearly in Scotland. So signal is pretty dodged. We'll come to file next season. When you come to file next season, you must come to the tunnel area uh, at the halfway line and you must say hello. There's going to be a change for the coasters. Owen Jared Evans is coming on. Owen Jared. Owen Jared, Jared. Evans is going to be coming on. Uh, Jack Tomlinson is going to take a load of abuse for that. I think it's just another look at him, isn't it? It's a chance for the for the gaffer to have another look at at Owen Emsy. I thought he did really well on yep. Saturday when he uh, when he started. Yep. And and it's an orthodox position in midfield as yeah, well. The other, and the other it, day. it's an opportunity for him to to have a look at who might be around uh, at Mill Farm next season because there's only two players currently in con three I think including Danny Phyllis Kirk but I would imagine he'll be moving on journeyman James P 2812 good afternoon and welcome to you um, and Max Bailey wants to know what the 50 quid is all about context is key no idea no, I haven't a clue either no idea um, and Nathan Midgley is crawling to Max crawling yeah I'm glad you're joking, Max. I'm glad to work along a brilliant person as yourself. Oh. He's never said that about me. He's never said I'm brilliant. Owen Evans is now ready. They coast to number 18. They're in for a third here. Oh, oh. It's a, oh and it's a brilliant piece of work by Chris Neal, who throws it out quickly for Ostabashi. Can he turn Odishin? I tell you what, Odishin has been excellent this afternoon. Sarah, we didn't get your coast, uh, Woking player of the mat, uh, player of the season. And in, in the interest of balance, what else did we want? Best moment. Most improved player. We got most improved players. It really good, two I asked really for. good contributions. Oh. Um, <clears throat> your best moment of the season, then, folks. 
Uh, and to answer your question, uh, to, to put my two penny thing, Conor Barrett is my player. Is it? We're in here. No, we're not. Great defend defending him. by the home side. Right, full back. Far side getting across there. The captain, Josh Casey, covering there in the box as Danny Ormond looks to Dan says pounce. Ebbs Fleet now in the drop zone. That is correct. Boreham Wood won. Ebbs Fleet nil, which makes those two places teams swap places. Yeah, fantastic moment there for the Wood. Home to Ebbs Fleet United. They're away, I think, aren't they, Jack? The Fleet are away at Boreham Wood. And currently occupy that final spot in the relegation zone. I've got nil-nil on flash score, Mank Dan. It maybe has been disallowed because I've been reverted two goalless. <laughs> Nathan, you know I'm only joking. You know I'm only joking. Uh, what about Max, me, it Nathan? Wasn't it cost them what? Co oh yes, yes, sir. Yes, the fifty, qu the fifty quid substitution for the home side. Yeah, glad to know someone's We've listening. SBB. Danny Whitehead. Uh, Danny Whitehead coming off, and uh, Owen Evans is coming on now. Interestingly, Boreham Wood has not come up. Can we get that on Twitter, Rob? See if that's what are you after. Yeah, I, I, I thought have a so feeling as well. it might have been. Yeah, um, Malky Watson's his best moment because of the Ormrod's goal against Rochdale, turning point of the season. He says. Yeah, just for clarif. Akinola again, who's on a hat trick for the home side away by Sam Graham. Yeah, can I just say for clarification, because that goal between Boreham Wood and Ebsley has been disallowed, Boreham Wood do slip into that final relegation spot in 21st on 52 points. That's so it's two points behind Ebsley United. A disal disallowed goal then. Maiden Edward 2 0 down against Chesterfield. It's now level. Uh, Chesterfield, are, I mean, they've been, in fairness, they've been on the beach, haven't they? Yeah, that may be true, but it is Oldham quite 2, Willstone 2 in the National League. It's all kicking off, really. Yeah, so 28 minutes for Boreham Wood or Ebsleek to get themselves on the right end of as that result. As it stands, the bottom three are all losing again. Oxford City losing 1 0. They are bottom and relegated weeks ago when they um, met AFC Fylde. Dorking Wanderers are 4-2 down. Uh, Kidderminster are 3-1 down. Boreham Wood are the only team in the bottom four who are gaining anything, but a point will not be enough for them. Ebsleet will be happy with 0-0. Um, they won't, however, be happy with losing. But I can't imagine there's a lot of quality on show at Ebsleet against Boreham Wood this afternoon. Um, and then it's York City in 19th, Wheelstone 18th, Walking up to 17th on 55 points, the same number of points as filed. Filed are going to finish the season in 16th place, which, considering when Chris Beach took over, we were five points adrift of second bottom, we'd all have taken it. This season was all about being safe in the National League, and we're going to be here for another one. Right, come on, Ebsfleet, says Max Bailey. Um, nil nil. That's going to go all the way through to Chris Neal and Bryce Hosanna now. Chance to bring it forward. Ormrod gets it to Ustabashi. Ustabashi driving forward. Owen Evans up over the top onto Danny Ormrod on that far right hand side. And that's cut out and that's going to be a throw into the coasters, I would imagine. Walking quite happy just to get rid there over on that far side. And uh, substitution. Yeah, uh, the fourth official is holding nothing up. Here we go. I like this. Coming off the pitch, please show your appreciation for number 23, Jermaine Anderson. That's interesting, guys. So Jermaine, uh, Jermaine Anderson, it's actually the same numbers coming off. It's it for us. Jermaine Anderson is coming off the number 23, and coming on is Manny. Oh, you're lakey. You did well there. Oh, you're lakey. Yeah, I'd have right a little look at that. Don't mind it myself. And uh, you know what? If I'd. Uh, I thought Reese Brown's done well and he's, uh, he's been taken off. Yes. And uh, he's been replaced by Charlie Kendall. And uh, 
Every credit to the two players. They've gone off over at the far side to walk in front of a packed home standing area. And I tell you, it was a good turnout at the, at the seating area and along this side. So three sides of the ground. Really good crowd. What would you say? Two and a half grand? Two and a half thousand? It's looking that way, isn't it? Something along those lines. Yeah, and getting a warm round of applause. Here they come again now down that left hand side with Kendall, the newcomer. Ball comes across the face of goal. That'll go through to Chris Neal, who won't be happy that uh, he's conceded two goals. You're right, he won't. This be. afternoon, he does not like conceding goals, but he'll be pleased he's got them back on the pitch. Oh, yeah. Long sent it down the line, but too far out of the line. And I think um, Nick Anderton has got another card in his hand I think Tom Walker might be going to get pulled in well, it's a yellow card anyway for the substitute Charlie Kendall he was late on the challenge for Adam Long he's caught him on the ankle and uh, Sarah says Luca has been great and now it's time for the bar can't say a blame what part of Scotland are you in Sarah whereabouts whereabouts are you we're going to have a nice we're going to have a nice malt whiskey to celebrate staying up Have you, what have you got on there? You've got West Brom on. What's the score? He's got 1-0. You're losing. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> every cloud, Jack, <laughs> every, every cloud. We'll keep an eye on what's happening in... He flicked on well there. That was a really nice flick on there from the substitute Kendall. To no avail for Woking. Hassana will press. Max Bailey says, Michael is watching Ebbsfleet on the TV. What is happening? My dad is watching non-league play. This was not in the Good script. Good chance. It's Gone wide. unlucky. Just wide of the post there. Good strike in the box. They're appealing for a corner. Woken, it won't come. Looks like Tom Walker is about to come on. Yeah. And... Uh, it also looks yeah, Jack like Morris. Jack Morris is going to be going through his. Jack Morris is going to get a run out, isn't he? His final instructions. Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes left of the season in a game that doesn't mean anything to the coasters. Give him a go. Oh, you're in Coldstream. Lovely up there. You're in where? Sarah's in Coldstream. Oh, I see. It's actually Northumberland. It's not going well. It isn't. It really no, it's isn't. Not going well. A bit more commitment. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit right. more desire. We need to finish high in the league here. Yeah. We are high in the league. We need to finish higher. Dave Brand's complaining that we're not finished high in the league. Considering where we were at five care. points away. He's a hard <laughs> taskmaster. We should have brought some of his scaffolding down. Oh, we didn't. We put it up in the goal and look what happened. He's got the work in. He's, he's had the, the, he's they put a banner up. <laughs> Max Conway with the header. Shouts for our ball. We don't know which way it's going. It's gone. Uh, it's gone. Walking's way. Danny Omrod is frustrated. <laughs> Chris Beach is now getting more and more animated with the fourth official. Dave Brand wants to join us on commentary. It's not happening. He's tried to swap his tickets now. What's? It? Oh, he's got his. Oh, he's off to Manchester City, mm. Chelsea after this. You'll enjoy that, pal. Eh? Skipping oh, the AFC fan end of season dinner to go to to go to. Shocking. Shocking, unbelievable behaviour. Bye, Dave. <laughs> I hope Chelsea <laughs> smash him. Mank done, we will, we will bring that. So, the two throws of the dice, we've got uh, Tom Walker and Jack Morris will come on to make his first team debut for the Coasters and you and I will give him a standing ovation when he comes in. That yeah. ball's across and away comfortably by Max Conway. And... Uh, Am I am I welcoming the team in tonight? Uh, yeah, right, right. So they'll get a standing ovation then because, right. The final the final two substitutions. Quiz question for next season. The final two substitutions of the season for the coasters. Give us a chance. Replacing Danny Ormrod is Tom Walker. Well done, Danny. Great season. 
probably hung over from his 18th birthday. We'll give him yeah, that. Yeah, what a great. I mean, sure he's got. A but the next one, tonight. the next one, massive moment, another AFC fad debutant, all from the academy. Yeah, credit to Chris Beach. Dan Edge said is coming off, and Jack Morris coming on for 20 minutes. Can we make a note? 157.13, and we'll get that clip to his parents. 157. Yeah, the for uh, for Jack's parents, a really proud moment for them, as uh, as he comes on to make his first team debut. Taylor O'Kane came through the academy. 18 yesterday. 18 yesterday. Here they come again. Free kick. And that'll, be, that'll be a yellow card. He I don't know who got that one. Ethan Mitchell. Ethan Mitchell. Right. Postman has just been. Mank Dan says Postman has just been and asked me what game I was listening to. I said five v walking. He said, "Is that rugby? I never want to get post ever again." <laughs> Is Coldstream really north of the River Tweed? Well, uh, I still think I'm going to have to check that. Um, is Coldstream actually in Scotland? Oh, I haven't a clue. What a proud moment for, for, for Jack Morris to come on and make, it, make his debut. We've had Taylor O'Kane come through the academy. We've had Danny Ormrod make his debut this season and take the place by storm. Jerry McCullion and now Jack Morris. Absolutely. Fantastic work by Chris Gunner and his team in the academy. And every credit to the Coasters fans who've made the long journey down from the Fylde Coast. Beach balls haven't been quite as prevalent as I hoped this afternoon. Uh, and well done to my nephew, Niall Clifford, who came down from Carlisle this morning and managed to make it into the ground. We won't ask what speeds he was doing but he thought he had three hours more than he did. Ozana will pick this up for the coasters. Uh, Sarah says it's all right. Right now, uh, uh, Kath J says Coldstream is in Northumberland. Owen Evans now driving forward. He's bit and uh, that'll be no foul. Good tackle by Timmy Odashina for the home side. And that will be a foul this time. Yeah, a bit late now. I imagine him. that's going to be another yellow card. Like it, didn't it, the young man? On his first appearance there, Morris, a bit late. Yeah. So welcome to the welcome to the game, Jack Morris. Oh, uh, indeed. Made his debut two minutes in, yellow card. Yeah, he is literally, literally two minutes into his first team debut. Uh, picks up a yellow card. Good tackle. Good lad. Oh, yeah. Gets stuck in. Yeah. Bit of something there. Cold stream discussion ah, going on. Right, yeah, you're right. So there is a cold stream in Scotland and and there is indeed one in Northumberland. I didn't know there were two cold streams. So there you go. 18 minutes left here at the Laithwaite Community Stadium. I thought Laithwaite was a wine company, but it turns out it's a team of accountants around here. Long free kick, left footed and long diagonal, looking for the penalty area. And it comes into the into the penalty area. Offside, says the assistant referee, away to our right. And the referee signals for the free kick. Chris Neal is going to take this. He's going to go long. He has to go long. We have to try and get something out of this football match. But equally, apart from Ethan Mitchell got a bit of a... But he seems to have had no ill effects of that knock earlier on. Ooh. Oh, Ustabashi now has turned his man. He's got Tom Walker outside. Ustabashi still going. Ustabashi gives it out to Tom Walker. Ball comes across the face of goal. Ustabashi shoots, blocked. Probably the coast's best move of the game, Jack, so far. I mean, I completely agree. The way it opened up for him. Or only move of the game. <laughs> Ustabashi now go going in. Ustabashi, a contender for goal of the season. And uh, if he'd got three this afternoon, he'd have been top scorer, wouldn't he, uh, Rob? Yeah, if he'd got three this afternoon, he's not going to get three now in... Um, which is probably just as well, because I bet they've I bet they've engraved the trophy, you know, with Nick Orton's <laughs> name on it. <laughs> I bet they're just grateful it's not going to be Bashy's afternoon. It's probably an instruction, don't get three, we've engraved the trophy, we can't afford to work any... Um... um 
I don't know, Aid Wills, where, where Coldstream Scotland is really at. I'll, I'll look it up later. They, they, these are just going to have to go as unanswered questions for this season. Max Conway now driving in on the opposition goal. Conor Barrett now on the far side. The coast is right. Check steps. Now, can he get the ball across? Ball does come across. And a good save at the end. I don't know whether it was a shot or a cross, Jack. But finally... Right. Chris 2536, uh, just south of the river opposite Coldstream three or four years ago. We walked through Coldstream on a Saturday afternoon and wondered where everyone was. Turned out Scotland were playing rugby. 79 Coasters fans this afternoon. Absolutely outstanding. Yeah, applauded by the fans behind the goal as well, which is a nice touch from the home supporters today. 2-0 then. Ball comes across. Swung in. Can we get into it this time? No, and it's hooked away by a walking defender. Only as far as Tom Walker gets it inside to Owen Evans. Back to Bryce Hosanna. Good to see Bryce going to get through 90 minutes. Mm. Ustabashi. I think, although the, the, despite the result, plenty of positives for the Coasters this afternoon. Great work there by Max Conway, all the way back to Chris Neal. Now, Jack Morris, a chance to bring it forward, gets it inside to Ethan Mitchell, looking for a crossfield ball, doesn't take it, drives forward himself, out of his feet to Owen Evans. Mitchell again, turns his man, who tries to grab hold of him, doesn't work. Max Conway now, and Odishina wins the foul. I'll tell you what, Odishina has been outstanding this afternoon. I think he's high on the list for man of the match, to be honest. Right, Shezza from Wikipedia. Coldstream lies on the north bank of the River Tweed in Berwickshire, while Northumberland in England lies. The Coldstream guard, yes, the Coldstream guards have bagpipes and where, yeah. Uh, right, Coldstream definitely confirmed in Scotland. Okay, thank you. That one. Moving on to the next unanswered. Any other un unanswered questions? I haven't got any. No, I haven't either. What goes up but doesn't come down was your. Doesn't, has no one still got nobody's, that yet? nobody's given your answer. That's part of full time. What do you mean, my answer? Sarah is, defo definite, Sarah is definitely in Scotland and very happily in Scotland. What an effort. Oh, oh, what an effort wow, that is! What a third goal. goal with an absolutely stunning third goal. The shouts around us were shoot, and from 20 yards, he did exactly that. It was an absolute stunner. I don't know whether they've voted for their goal of the season yet here at Woking. <laughs> well, Kevin Burko, take a bow. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to let him do it. Yeah. I'm listening. No, oh, it needs a bit more oomph. I, like I should it. have done that for him. I like it. I I a bit good. more oomph to it. Yeah, there's a reason that man's got so much potential yeah. at this end of the football in pyramid. Struck that with so much venom past nice. Chris Neal. Great finish, 3-0. Right, Aid Wills, were, uh, his dad was in the Colstrian grads. He was a Batman for Lord Summerling. Hashtag just saying. Uh, Sarah, have a large one. And tell him to throw away the cork and the bottle of that whiskey tonight. Deservedly staying up. A boring wood going down. As it stands. Um, then we wanted to play us every week. Uh, they're good, nice people down here. I'm just... It was easy to get to as well. It's a lot easier than Ebbsfleet. They, I think Burke will be offside there. No, he's stayed on. Well, they needed to win, to be sure. Uh, and they've done that in some style. And I'm not going to knock them. Uh, oh, the desire's there to see. Johnny, a Johnny 18, listening in not end this afternoon. Johnny 18 should be already at Mill Farm. He's got a big gig tonight. Yeah, looking got forward to sharing a beer with Johnny. Um, I'm not staying late. I've got to be up in the morning. I've got to be up early. Odishina, in a rare, rare mistake, sends it uh, long and out the... Yeah, we'll take that, won't we? Yeah. Um, I've got an Ikea. Oh, outstanding. Ikea are coming between 7 and 11 on Monday. Brilliant, isn't it? Hey, no, good news, Jack. Rob. That's brilliant, isn't it? Got in a new kitchen. We are staying up is the shout going round the ground, and, and deservedly so. And, you yeah, know, we've had our it. chance to sing that. And I'm 
I'm just chuffed for these people. Yeah, Wheelstone just took in the lead as well. Um, you, uh, you have a look at what happens happening on Odishina in the sunshine. Forward. Odishina again. I'll have to tell BBC Radio, sorry. Odishina just makes use of his goalkeeper, Jaskalainen, and he has had one save to make, hasn't he, Jack? Oh, yeah, he's not been tested you know, whatsoever. But you know what? Um, met some really good people. You've had an opportunity to talk to a broadcasting legend. Oh, yeah, what a day. So that, uh, so that you can emulate that in the future. Uh, Malky Watson's best moment of the season was Danny Ormrod's goal against Rochdale. I'd like to hear any other best moments of the season. I'm going to call one that I got right in the very first game of the season away at Willstone when I got to call that goal. When I thought things were going to go a lot better, but to call that goal by Nick Horton uh, was, was quite a moment. Um, it was described as a hell of a strike by the Wheelstone commentator. And me, I just went mental. Final substitution of the afternoon is going to be for the Cardinals. And I would imagine it's somebody over on the far side. And uh, it's Jaden Luca, who's Sarah's player of the match, player of the season. And uh, he's... Uh, and we'll applaud him as well. It's nice to be able to applaud opposition teams. Lewis Walker is coming on. For the last knockings of the National League season. And the Coasters players will make their way over to the Coasters fans over on the far side at the end of the game. And the walking players will do a well-deserved lap of honour. Yeah. Um, and it will be well-deserved well as well. Well done, everyone. Cheers, fella. Ah. And congratulations. <laughs> Another legend. What's going on? Another legend. Who was that? Well, I can't remember his name, hence why I haven't shouted it, but he's uh, Luton, used, used to manage Luton Town. All oh, right, OK. Right, he's doing his scouting. What is going there. on here? Why is everyone here? Uh, well, they, well, they knew we were coming, Jack, basically. That's what happened there. Um, SPB, I don't have a specific best goal of the season, but I can tell you that it was a great period of time at the very end of 23 and the start of 24 when they began to turn it around. Mick Harford just wished us. Of course it was. Wasn't it? Did you recognise it? Was Mick him? Harford. Just um, yes. wished us well yes. in our game today. So Yes, he did. Mick Harford there. Mick Harford, yeah. Full of legends, this, this gaff, apparently. Well, you know, they're sitting with two. You guys needed some, some better specs or something, not recognise these There's people. There's nothing wrong with my glasses. Clearly. It's my eyes that are bad. My glasses are fine. Mick Harford there. Berwick is in England. Berwickshire. Coldstream guards have killed some bagpipes. Northumbrians have killed some bagpipes. I lived up that way. Oh, Kath! Kath! Stop it! Keep your voice down, will you? No. Oh, we're in. We're in. We're in. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Can you hear that beeping? Yeah, there's a little bit. There's a little bit there. Max Bailey says it's stop and blushing. Walking come again. They've been good this second half. I mean, they got a little bit of a leg up towards the end of the first half. Um, people said it was a soft free kick, but hey, second half, they've just been the better side. Oh, they've been enjoyable to watch, I have to say. I mean, it's been really and nice I've for enjoyed us. I've enjoyed my afternoon here. Haven't we? I mean, it's um, only two o'clock now, so... We've got it is only two o'clock, yeah. We're going to be we're going to be home by seven. Quick shout and onto the wines. Oh, goodness. Oh, I'll tell you what it is. It's my watch. Yes, obviously. Yes, it's my watch bleeping. Seven minutes left. No, yes, seven minutes left here, plus whatever he adds on, which can't be much. I mean, does it need to be anything added on? No, Boreham would still occupying that fourth place. Boreham would are still... You see, absolutely, it'll take nil-nil. Oh, yeah. You know, because it, it, it guarantees their safety. They'll be sitting in now, the fleet. That's a good touch. That's a Clever. was a good touch by Jack Morris and uh, equally it was, it was a foul. Should have been booked for that. Dreadful. Cynical. Not. Oh, <laughs> dreadful. <laughs> dreadful. Blushing out your hair. Later scores. Altrincham 1, Oxford City 0. Barnet 3, Kidderminster 1. Boreham 0, Epsfleet 0. That's really the only score of significance right now. Is it's whatever happens there. Halifax winning. 
Uh, Chesterfield at 2-2 against Maidenhead. Dagenham and Redbridge all shot 2-2. Hartlepool lead 4-3 at Dorking. So Dorking giving it a right go in the end. Can Ustabashi get on the end of this in the penalty area? No, but Jack Morris can. I'll tell you what, he's done well since he came on, no fear. A bit like Gerald McCullion did when he came on. Just got stuck into it and had a right go. Owen Evans has done well since he came on. Yeah. Ethan Mitchell's been brilliant since he Good joined tackle. the football club. Sam Graham's also been excellent since he joined the the football club. Yes, it's good football from Woking. Good to see Bryce Hosanna getting 90 minutes again after being injured. That's poor. And that man has been absolutely outstanding, Adam Long. Morris now gets it out to Walker on this near left-hand side. Walking again, doing what? Doing really good pressing work. Yeah, they've got the desire today, haven't they, to get themselves on the right end of this result, obviously. Yeah, and, and Beachy was saying early on, it was a strange game for him because there's, there's nothing riding on it for, for AFC Fylde. Apart from, he gets a chance to look at some players and make sure nobody comes through it. You know, they all come through it unscathed. Yeah, definitely. I think because for some of them, we're watching the last five or six minutes of some of these players' AFC Fylde careers, which is always a sad time for me when I'm... I'm saying goodbye to players who was offside anyway. Um, Mank Dan, highlight of the season. Gated fans mourning about our pitch after getting beaten off Tasia. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. No pitch invasion allowed. Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck with the usual do not come onto the pitch. Yeah, you've said it. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> yeah, the usual. Don't come onto the pitch at the end of the game. It's a bit high away to our left. Oh, they'll be on. Ball is across the face of goal. Away by Odishina, who is surely their man of the match this afternoon. If Odishina is not named man of the match. I'm surprised they haven't published it, though, actually. Yeah. Right. Inside now. Ustabashi, oh, wow. can he get one? Oh, well done, the goalkeeper. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on... Right, Jack Connor wants to know what happened for there to be four minutes of added time. There'll be four or five in the second half, won't there, Jack? Something like that, you yeah. You would think four or five, Rob? Yeah. Today's man of the match, as Here we go. By our match sponsors, have a look. Is awarded to number 16, Tunji Akinola. I suppose goals get man of the match. It was Timmy Odishina all day long. These sponsors know nothing. Is it, oh, is it a bit like our place? Nick Horton's always our man of the match, yeah. yeah. It's fine. It's fine. I can beat uh, 10 minutes get man of the match. We had uh, Stephen Dobby came on. He, he was awarded man of the match for two minutes being on the play, play pitch because he scored the winner against Kidderminster. Yes. I sent it back. You're not having that. <laughs> 79 Coasters fans, every credit to those who have made the journey, the long, long journey. Uh, the beach balls are out over on the far side now, being thrown around. Yeah, I did think I'd see a little bit more of those beach balls, I have to say. Yeah, well, I, 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 think, I think Steve McClellan left his back at oh. Mill Farm. <laughs> <laughs> Do, dare we shout, beachy, beachy, give us a wave? No. No? You embarrass me. <laughs> 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 Should I shout beachy beachy give us a wave? Right, can we leave the cold stream debate now, please? Please, let's have your highlights of the season or your funniest moment or the time I let you down most. Neil goes long. We're just waiting now for the we're waiting for the the fourth official to indicate how much time there is left. I'm going to keep an eye on flash scores. Solihull Moors have taken the lead against York City. Let's hope it's uh, Whitmore. Conor Barrett now trying to drive forward. Walking are going to finish one place below the coasters, I think it is. Yes, goal difference yep. separating. It is. York City have dropped two places. They're on 53 points. Um... It is now. Ebbsfleet are above them on 54. Ustabashi. Akin all of them. Man of the match here. They can play between themselves at the moment. Yeah, they can the just let side. it. 
I mean, just do us all a favour. Just put one up. Uh, Ed Will says, funniest moment, the time you shouted, beachy, beachy, give us a wave. <laughs> Top three moments, Max Bailey says, Chesterfield home, my first game working, Rochdale home game, and celebrating uh, after South End. Mitchell now driving forward for the coasters. And uh, gave Walker a lot to do there. It's a walking player down in the... Uh, it's your mate, Dan Moss, who's is. down in the penalty area. I hope he's all right. Um, he will be, but that's going to add more time onto what's already being added on. He's grasping that left shoulder. Yeah, well, she'll pop that back in for the last few minutes. I do hope you mean his shoulder. Yeah. Oh, right. There is going to be five. Five minutes added on. They don't know we've got an award. Bristol Coasters says top moment, a nice handshake from Brian at Eastley to all the Coasters travelling fans. That's nice, thank you, Bristol Coaster. That's uh, very kind of you. Folks, there's going to be five minutes. There's five minutes of the season left. Um, there's nothing left to shout for, play for. Jack's got his feet up in front of me. Oh yeah. Um, we, we, you know, the beach balls are out over on the far side. The suits are hands in pockets. There's one or two starting to make their way away, but they shouldn't do that. They should go and see. I see Judy Roberts and uh, others have, have gone back to where the the rest of the Coasters fans are, because um, I've asked that the Coasters players go right over to them uh, and give their Thanks and appreciation. It's been a good season, Jack, really. It's been entertaining. Where we were. Yeah, we've done well to keep the faith in the boys. I mean, you've been pushing for that the whole season, Brian. Kath says, just pop that shoulder back in. Getting over the uh, line like the way we have. It's been they're get, getting, over the, getting over the line. Um, you know, the, the confirmation the other night that we are 100% playing National League football and, and walking now playing guaranteed 100% playing National League football next season. We've watched some wonderful football since Chris Beach came into the side. We weren't playing badly under Adam Murray, but we weren't getting what we needed. And Chris Beach has, has brought that belief into them. Uh, Peter Howard says, if Boreham Wood score, York will be relegated. Now, come on, Boreham Wood. <laughs> come on, Boreham Wood. <laughs> Is that all right? Do we mind if, do we mind if Boreham Wood relegate York? Is that all right? <laughs> Approval. Um, Max Bailey says Boreham would have been Boreham would saved what's Max Bailey got that we don't know oh is that an opener for Boreham I don't Wood? know I don't know what's Ma where's Max Bailey no that hasn't gone in it hasn't gone in Ma oh, Max is watching it on NLTV that's going to go all the way back to I have to say the Radio Surrey commentators has made this a better game than, it is, than it's been. He has, hasn't he? You know, every credit to him. That's going to be a free kick to uh, to Woking. They're not going to rush to take it. We're not in any rush for them to take it. We're going to be able to shake hands with everybody here. Uh, Cass says, Brian, Jack and Rob and the whole team. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure and privilege, honour to bring you commentary home and away every single game this season I'm an, a very privileged person to stand in the tunnel most games till I get sent off as your, as your stadium announcer um, Kath Jess has just wanted to say thanks uh, to all of you, thank you very much Kath Jack Ekman it's been an absolute honour bringing you on board uh, since that first game at Charnock Richard and we got so wet didn't we, where were we Bamber Bridge or somewhere like that, Bamber Bridge Leisure Centre or something like that. Yeah. And we had to cover the thing in polythene just to, st just to stay dry. Missing goals at that point. Uh, Chris, Beach, Chris Beach has gone to get away from... Actually, what he's done, he's gone away so that, so that Woking can have their moment. They're going to get their moment on TV in a minute. The cameraman's not allowed to show the pitch. He can show fans, but not the pitch. Yes. Crazy. Well, um, they've lined up to the barriers, haven't they, getting... Them Ready to I tell you what there are break onto this pitch. There are no stewards. There are very few stewards. Ball comes across. Can Tom Walker get on the end of it? 
No, we can't. Uh, guys, it really hasn't been very exciting for him, of course, his point of view this afternoon, but it doesn't matter. We're full-time at Boreham Wood. Are they relegated? Boreham Wood confirmed as relegated. That saved us 50 quid. The chairman will be delighted. Conway now getting into the corner. And wins himself a free kick with 30 seconds to go. Can we win it in 30 seconds, Jack? Could you imagine if we see a, a double here from Adam Long to make it 2-2? Could you imagine? I don't want to do it to Woking. Yeah, but that wouldn't send him down, would it? I don't. I don't want to take that risk. We quite don't need frankly. The uh, no, because it's free two. It's three nil anyway. I said two nil. That shows how much I'm concentrating. Sorry, folks. It's three um, nil. I don't two. know. Bor I think Boreham, uh, Boreham would finish, Jack. Yeah. Rob. So Boreham would have finished and have been relegated. So walking are, a f and that's it. <laughs> that's been the season. Uh, and we will applaud Woking. Uh, celebrations down there. I'll get my thumbs up for oh, Nick. Yeah, They're going to be rocking all over the world here. The coasters are safe. Woking is safe. It's been a fabulous afternoon. From me and Jack Ekman, we are going to get out of here, kind of sharpish, because we've got a drink to do tonight. So thank you so much. Kath Jason have been too ill to be there. Sometimes even to listen, but I know while I'm well enough, you'll never let us down. Love the banter, love the commentary. Please thank the team tonight from all us listeners. They don't see, uh, but we're here. Um, Holden like Amanda says, thanks for everything. Nathan, kind words coming in. Max Bailey, kind words coming in. Kevin J says, thanks, great day. Jimmy Cross says, thanks, Brian and Jack. See you next season. Jack Ekman, thank you. Thank you, you, thank you very so much. much. We're getting a bit emotional here, but thank you so much for listening. Today is Woking's party down here. We are going to get out of here. Thank you so much for listening. It's finished Woking 2, AFC filed nil. We will be back next season as a result. It's 3 nil, not 2. It was 3 nil. Who cares? We are going to be visiting Woking next season. Thank you so much for listening. Good afternoon and God bless. Have a good one, pal. Cheers.